from Kessler Field at Monmouth University in West Long Branch, New Jersey, TV 34 Sports presents College Football. It's the Monmouth University Hawks to meet the Pace University Setters. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Lampin and welcome to Kessler Field here at Monmouth University and with me is Big Jimmy Hoos and Jimmy, I'll tell you, we got lucky again, just a gorgeous day for a college football game. Yeah, that's right, Bobby, there's no excuses today, the sun's shining, it's a great day for football, the field's dry, it should be a, it should be a real good game today. Coach Kevin Callahan's squad uh, struggled their opening game of the season, they lost it, but they came back with a big win last week. A big win, the first NEC uh, conference game win uh, over St. Francis, uh, defense played well, offense played well, so Coach Callahan's really got his team ready to play. And you talk about the offense of Monmouth University. University last week. Uh, Coach Callahan really pleased with the play of two freshman running backs, uh, Madrano, Mike Madrano, and Eric Mazur. Well, when you talk about the freshman, Madrano had a touchdown, Mazur had two touchdowns, but more importantly, uh, Monmouth throws a lot of backs at you, a lot of fresh legs. The offense keeps coming at you. They score a lot of points. The other thing that Monmouth had to be pleased with last week in that big victory over San Francis, the play of special teams. They finally came through. We talk about Kenny Flores and William Holder. Kenny Flores had a, a punt return for a touchdown, and uh, Holder had a, a touchdown on the kickoff. So they're really doing well. The special teams is clicking. Hey, this team has really got, the, got it going. And defensively, it looked like the Univer Monmouth University Hawks kind of found themselves last week against St. Francis. Season opener, they gave up a lot of points, but they were tough last week. Yeah, against Southern Connecticut, uh, they get shut out. It's 27 nothing. give up a lot of points. Uh, they come back on St. Francis. Uh, they do a good job. You're talking about the defensive end. Jason Gamitter had nine tackles and interception. A lot of leaders on that defense. They know how to play and know how to win. Watch for a big game today. And across the way for Pace University, Coach Greg Lasardi's team has really struggled off to a tough 0-2 start. Well, Coach Lasardi, again, tough start. You're 0-2. Uh, they're 0-2 lifetime versus Monmouth. He's looking for a big win out of his team today. And offensively, of course, uh, Pace is going to have to put some points on the board. Last week, they had one shining star in the play of quarterback, Kevin O'Connor. Yeah, Kevin O'Connor had a nice game. He had 224 yards, a career best for him, a career high. Uh, he can get points on the board. He's got to have a little protection. He can get it done, and that's what they're looking for, leadership. Getting it done offensively is one thing, but as you know, Jimmy, the game is won on a defensive side of the football. A big, big job today for Pace University. Well, Pace, uh, they've given up a lot of points to Monmouth, the 94, 20 to nothing, and 95, 46 to nothing. So you're looking at a defense that's really got a rebound. Their leading tackler was Reed Sands. He's the free safety. You cannot have your free safety making all the tackles, 17 uh, last week. So the tackles have got to come up, the linebackers have got to fill those holes, and they've got to get the job done. Well, as a former lineman yourself, you hate to see those little guys in the back getting all the credit for the tackle. <laughs> yeah, you've got, you got to come up and really stick somebody, really have fun, and, ha you know, just get out there and go after it. That's just what we want to do. Have fun this afternoon. We'll see some good hit, and we're going to get after it also. It's Mammoth taking on Pace University on TV 34. We're coming right back. Welcome back to Kessler Field and Monmouth University football pace to take on the Monmouth Hawks and we'll talk about that right after our national anthem. appreciates the anthem sung by Amy Edmonds and Brian Von Glan of the class of 1998 here at Monmouth University. It is Alumni Day or Parents Day here, Jimmy, and you can see they're turning out. Terrific crowd. Yeah, big crowd. Uh, and you 
walked up this afternoon or this morning. There was a lot of tailgating going on. Everybody's having a great time. Looking forward to a good football game. No question about it. The fans have really taken to this Monmouth University football program. And if you arrive here about 10 in the morning for a uh, 1 o'clock kickoff, the parking lot is packed. The grills are fired up. The music is playing. They're throwing the football around. Uh, tailgating has taken over here in West Long Branch, New Jersey. Yeah, what better thing to do on a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon is tailgate, watch football, just get into it. I came by last night about 11 o'clock. I saw you had your grill out, your tent <laughs> pitch ready to go. Yeah, I get here around 8. <laughs> Our officials, the referee is Steve Lightman, the umpire James Ritchie, Lions and Robert Hennessy, the line judge Tommy Evangelista, back judge is Ed O'Connell, the timer Raymond Stripe, and the field judge Clarence Davis. So they're in charge of this one. And there's our referee right there. And we're looking forward to a big football game here this afternoon between Monmouth University and Pace. Our referee is Steve Lightman. And it looks like Pace will kick it off. So the Pace Setters, that's right, folks, the Pace Setters will be kicking things off and about ready to go. Chris Chapa is the kickoff man for Pace University. Pace comes in with a record of 0-2. Monmouth at 1-1. One one. And here's the kick. And Holder takes the kickoff. Gets up to 19. And pulls at the 18-yard line. So Holder ran one back left. Unable to break free that time. Holder and Ridley back deep. Holder didn't get the block he was looking for. Yeah, Holder is a dangerous uh, return man. Good speed to the outside. Good coverage from Pace. So Monmouth will start things off first and ten from their own 18. Dan Sabella is the quarterback. First play from scrimmage. Sabella to the long count. The handoff, they go up the gut, number 31 on the carry. O'Neill, and he picked up a couple. Well, this big Ralph O'Neill, 5'10", 200, had a good game last week. Went to St. Francis, workhorse. Going over that left right side, with Morano, 58, 76, uh, Coniglio. Always charting the plays, of course, on, carried down the offensive Let's coordinator. Chris Parklowski, the backup quarterback. So it'll be second and about... Nine. And Sabella took the snap. You heard whistles blowing. Black flying. Somebody moved up front for Mom, I think. Yeah, but it looked like 58 Morano, the, the right guard. And here's the Mammoth offense. Tailback Ralph O'Neill, fullback Jimmy Barrett, flanker Rich Finer, split on Anthony Galella, tight end is Justin Barbellino, Tarico, Coniglio, Murphy, Morano, and Birdie. Up front for Mammoth. And Sabella, of course, is the quarterback. So that penalty pushes Mammoth back about five yards. First series from scrimmage, Sabella drops, looks to fire, and the pass incomplete at the 30, intended for number 85 of the Mammoth Hawks. Has, uh, off the mark, Anthony Galella, the intended receiver. Well, good protection for Sabella right off the bat. Not really nobody open. Well, he went to his flanker, Galella, but the pass was overthrown. So it's third and about 12. Sabella ducked under center. Motion left to right. Sabella rolls out of the pocket. Flips it out, the pass complete, and up across the 25, pick up about up to the 26-yard line. O'Neill with the reception. But I don't think that's enough for the first down. Well, the fella had to dump it off to O'Neill, tried to get a field. He had to number two, had to tackle. He comes up, he's a good hitter, has a nose for football, makes a stop, but not the first down. So Mammoth will kick it away. Barbosi is the punter. Good job by the pace defense on the first series. Low snap, Barbosky gets the kick off a high, spiraling kick 
back to about the 30 and a fair catch signal. Number 80, Billy, Billy Metzikidis out of Bloomington, New York. And a nice punt right there by Mr. Markoski. Special teams, your kicking game, so important. Yeah, very important. Hey, so you mentioned about that defense. Hey, you really have a nice series there. The defense really needs to build on their confidence. Uh, we mentioned the open. They've uh, got a lot of points from off the last few years. And they want to uh, shut them down today. job forcing the turnover early here in the first quarter. Mama takes it over inside of Pace University territory. First and ten from about the 48. Down in his fourth year, animated today. And meanwhile, there's a flag on the play as they get it outside to number two Francis, but a flag on the play. We'll wait and see what the call is. Kevin Francis trying to scoot around the corner but it'll be holding against Monmouth. Well, Monmouth getting up to a poor start. Uh, penalty on the, the first series. Uh, motion now a holding call the first down. This is a veteran offense. You, know, you can't make these kinds of mistakes. A lot of these guys have been starting for three years. Well, penalties always a part of football but they always seem to come no matter when they come it's the wrong time. And that moves them way back. Holding against Monmouth. It was holding. After the penalty was against Monmouth, it'll be first and 20 back inside Monmouth territory at the Monmouth 43-yard line. First and 20, Sabella the quarterback. He drops back, looks, finds Holder, trying to spring Holder on the short pass, and Holder got out Sabella's to midfield. Pass to Holder is complete. And that's a good play. Uh, good out pitch, out right outside, right up field. So they cut some of that yardage in half there, but they get to about make it an eight second yard pickup, second and 12. Pace defense, Williams, Shotwell, Kumdike, Myers, and Matson. And here's the handoff right up the middle. Great hole springing through. Looks like it may go all the way. On the run, another tackle at the five yard line. Mike Madrano sprung it. Great inside trap blocking, and Madrano took care of the rest. No flags on the play. That pick up will stay. Luciana, number three in the corner. You know, ran down Madrano with a heck of a run. Uh, pace, nobody wrapping up in the middle. Good blocking in front. Madrano right down the field. Madrano took it at his own 43 and got it all the way up to the pace five yard line. 
first and goal from the five. So Medrano had a big game last week, and early on, springs loose up the middle. Great offensive line blocking on that play. Francis bounces outside and cuts down at the ankle. No pick up right there. Nice tackle right there by Reed Sands, the All-America candidate for Pace University. And that's why he's an All-American. That guy has a nose for football. I mentioned it before, but he reads the play. He's going outside, comes up real quick to get Francis, shoots the gap. So Mama, Jimmy tried to scoot Francis to the outside. It looked like he had some room, and all of a sudden Sanchez came up and closed it down. Yeah, tremendous speed. Second and goal from the five. Madrano, the lone setback. Sabella looks, throws, pass complete. Big hit right at the one-yard line. Big, big hit right there.
10. O'Connor drops back, fumble, picked up, and recovered by Mamas. And Mamas just surged through with a sack and a fumble. The recovery made by number 90, Todd Toomey. Number <laughs> 46. And he was up the field before uh, Joe O'Connor knew what to do. O'Connor had the ball down by his hip, tried to bring it up to get rid of the ball. And the strip, like a bitter. So Toomey can be a big recovery. Watch it again. The ball's down by his hip. Better just knocks it away. And Toomey, with no one near him, just hugs that one close, rolls over a couple of times, comes up with the fumble recovery, and turnovers always kill you, Jim, and already oh, yeah. two turnovers by Tate. Yeah, deep, too, deep in front territory. So Obama takes over on the fumble recovery inside the pace 20, first and 10 from the 19. The Bella fakes, hands it off. Medrano looks to go outside and gets up to about the 25-yard line. Medrano is knocked out of bounds. I'll tell you what, number three, Feliciano, the quarterback, that kid brings it every time. I mean, he's knocking heads. Jamie Feliciano made a tackle. Medrano with the run. Medrano already swung one loose from the uh, Mama 47 all the way up to the five-yard line of pace. Medrano, a freshman, enjoying a, a nice home season at the big game last week oh, at home, and here he is again already. He's got big numbers. Second and seven. Sabella back to throw. Throws it out wide to the left, and the catch made by number 25. Knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Good catch by Finer. He was covered again by Luciano. It was great. And a good throw by Sabella. Finer with that reception is going to be third and one for Mammoth. Look one more time. Finer out the flat. The fella fires it out there. Really a nice pass. The only place you can put it. A good catch by Finer. They hand off inside Medrano. Medrano may have gotten up across the nine yard line, but not much more than that. Yeah, that that's what pace needs. Number seven, Ryan Perone, the middle linebacker, 6'2", 237, wraps up and ran He's got to fill and make those tackles. So there you heard the PA man. It will be an official timeout to measure.
of Mammon, Anthony Galella, at the five-yard line. So Sabella looked in the end zone, nothing there, and it came underneath for the completion. Yeah, nice catch by Galella. Right across the middle, go to your tight end. Third and goal from the five-yard line. So big play right here. It's third and goal from the five. Holder is split wide to the right. Sabella barks the signal. Barrick in motion. Sabella throws, and Barrick almost made the catch, but a great defensive play. Coming up to knock it away with Hartman. I'll tell you, Barrick a little sick on that one. That ball hit him right in the hands. He thought he had a touchdown before he caught the ball. So it was Hartman defending. And at fourth and goal from the five, Mammoth will look to put three points on the scoreboard. Barrick into attempt the field goal. Ball will be placed at about the 12-yard line. So the snap is down, the kick is up. And the kick is no good, a line drive. He missed it to the left. And the pace defense holds. Well, Barrick hooked it a little bit. It was a real short kick. Um, hey, put your defense back out there. And, you know, you, what you want to do now is pull face down there. Well, Get in the punt and put your offense back on the field. Go down again. Pat Cynthia, noted kicking coach uh, throughout New Jersey, has been up working a little bit with Jimmy Barrick. And told us before the game that Barrick sometimes kind of slicing the ball. He's not hitting it square. You saw it there. He nailed it, but on a line drive and missed it to the left. So face takes over at the 20, first and 10, trailing it 7 to nothing. Mama's defense just closing things down on the Young inside. A pickup of maybe one. A good play by Ward, number 99, the uh, tackle. A good penetration, made the stop. Smith on the carry. One yard gain on the play, second and nine. So we'll call it second and nine. O'Connor is the quarterback. Win back, O'Connor, inside handoff, and that's going to be a pickup right there. They get past the line of scrimmage into the secondary, across midfield, down to the 40. What a run right there by number 28 of Pace University. A tremendous carry right there, and a pickup by Coleman. A good run by Coleman. Uh, Pace ran the inside trap. A good line play up front, and he sprang Coleman for a big game. Take another look here. We're going to trap the tackle. Number 75, Odella. Tackle's gone. He goes up against the linebacker. Two Look tackles Coleman missed out right there. And then Look at him just drive. So first and 10, O'Connor rolls. And he is smothered, taken down at about the 39-yard line. Yeah, this defense is going to be all over O'Connor. That was Berkey, the middle linebacker, 43, to make the stop. You know, Connor, he's, no he's got to be thinking in his head, hold on to that ball. Two fumbles already in this game, first quarter. So the ball down at the Mammoth 40, no gain. It'll be second and 10. A big pickup by Coleman. So second and 10 for the setters. Coleman drops back, looks, has to drop out of the pocket, tucks it under his arm and drilled out of bounds at the 36-yard line, a pickup of about four. Yeah, Mendez, 55, getting his shots in on the quarterback. I'll tell you, Connor's taking a beating already. <laughs> like I said, it's only the first quarter. Well, Kevin O'Connor, 6'3", 200-pound junior quarterback. Mentioned last week, 17 of 29, 224 yards and two touchdowns. It wasn't enough as Pace lost to Stony Brook, 27 to 21. But O'Connor can bring him back. Pace trailed a 27-6 last week and made it close. Third and six ball on the 36-yard line. Whistles blow and yellow flags go flying. So they'll talk things over. The referee today is Stephen Lightman. And that's 
one one great thing about a referee in football. You know, you can always blow the whistle and say, all right, let's take a couple of minutes and figure something out here. And lo and behold, they generally come up with something. Sometimes it amazes me. It amazes that person, too, Kevin Gallagher. Got the motion penalty. So motion against the pace. In the second quarter, Texas 14, Notre Dame 10. Across the way. And with three minutes and 50 seconds coach, uh, remaining in the second setters. quarter, Virginia Tech 14, Rutgers 7. Greg Lasardi, a record of four and seven career at pace on the road. Eight and 14 coming into this one. So third and 11 from the 41. And pace a little confused. And O'Connor wants to talk things over. They call timeout. Yeah, you can see uh, Mammoth, uh, their linebackers in their secondary were way off the ball. The linebackers were about seven to eight yards off the ball, really playing pass. Uh, kind of saw that today. Let's, let's take a timeout. We think we're going to call this uh, third down. It's very important. they got to get down the field. they got a good run by uh, Coleman, number 28. And, hey, they got to try and get the ball in the We're in the first quarter at Kessler Field. Four minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Mammoth leading it. Seven to nothing. A one-yard touchdown run by O'Neill. And the point after by Barrick has given the Hawks the lead early on. Kessler Field, what a terrific uh, facility they have here for Division I AA non-scholarship program. First class all the way. Oh, yeah. Great facility. They do a great job here. And a lot of credit to uh, the staff here at Mama. I want to thank Brian Iorardi, the assistant athletic director uh, in charge of communications for all his help and his entire staff. Everything's just as it should be. And right now, Mama's on top by seven. The best part is they guarantee sun and warm weather when we come up here. I'll take those odds yeah. any day. Here we go, third and 11. O'Connor looks over the defense, drops back to throw. Under pressure, that may be a fumble. Ball knocked from still loose on the ground, recovered by Mammoth. And a fumble, the arm was not going forward. O'Connor was hit as he dropped back. And Mammoth forces yet another turnover. Yeah, that's his man, number 59. 97, Emmanuel Stinson was coming. They were going to rush five people on that play. Everybody else dropped back in the coverage. And I'll tell you, Connor just had no time to throw. But he cannot cough up the ball. you got to punt it away. you got to see when that when that defensive front is coming. When you see 97, Stinson coming on the outside, hey, you know it's coming hard. If you don't have anybody open, lay down and cover the ball. Lay it down or throw it out of bounds. Yeah, exactly, Bob. So the third turnover by Pace already here, and we're only in the first quarter. Mama takes over. Inside of Pace territory, out the 49. Sabella throws it across, the pass complete. Flag in the backfield. And taken down, number 44 for Monmouth, Eric Mazur, but maybe a holding penalty in the backfield of Monmouth, and that's the call. You see that back judge throw that flag back there, you know it's holding. So take that reception away from Mazur. Monmouth had it at the 49 of Pace, but they're going to march the yardage off, so they'll go back inside of Mammoth territory. Well, Pace runs the 52, the Oklahoma, and they send five guys every time, so you know, uh, when you send uh, three or four receivers out uh, on the pass pattern, you know, you have five on five, and you're going to get those holding penalties. But we're going to take a look at that uh, best fumble. See, there's, there's Stinson coming on the outside. There's 53. Tommy Zdanowicz actually Zidano. made the first hit. Right. Holding against Monmouth. So it was a holding call against the Monmouth Hawks just as the completion was made. So Mazur caught it, but they'll nullify that with the holding call. It'll be first and 20 inside the 40-yard line, the Monmouth 38. Sabella drops back, swings it out wide. And back up to midfield, the reception made by Walter Christopic. So Christopic with the reception. Well, what Mammoth is doing, they're setting two wide receivers, the flankers deep, and they run the back out of the backfield short and just pick up chunks of yardage. So Christopic got it right out to midfield. And Mammoth has it, second and about 11. Mammoth leading it 7-0. Galella is split wide to the left. 
Good fake by Sabella. Finds Galella, but the pass just too high. He went up the ladder. Got his hands on it, but couldn't come down with it. Yeah, Galella had that ball. Should have had it. Uh, tremendous time for Sabella to throw the ball. Can really survey the field. Offensive line did a good job that time, giving him protection. Good piece of uh, quarterback work by Sabella there. A little play action. Good fake. Throws the line. Gave himself time in the pass. A little high. Tough catch for Galella. Couldn't hold on to it. As Jimmy said, he'll catch nine out of ten of them, I think. Sure. So that makes it third and 11 from the 50-yard line. Sabella again drops back. Throws it out past the 40-yard line. The catch made and knocked down immediately. Number 85, Anthony Galella. And I think that may be enough for the first down. From our angle, Jimmy, it looks like it'll be enough. And indeed it is. Yeah, so nice catch by Galella there. As soon as he got it, he got drilled. Watch this. Yeah, good protection. Galella's working against number 21, Hartman. A nice catch, but he's going to take it, and he knows it. Way to cover up the ball. So Galella, 85, again will split wide to the left. First and 10 from the pace, 38-yard line. Sabella hands it off, flags fly once again. And Christopic trying to bounce off the, the line there as he was hit. No gain on the play, but flags all over the place. I think we have encroachment. I didn't see anybody in the offensive line move. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm not a ref. Well, it's offsides, and you're right. Encroachment against the centers of Pace University. And that time, uh, Steve Lightman, the referee, faking us out a little bit, Jim. A couple of <laughs> fake moves to the hip before he finally made the call. <laughs> Had to make sure the call looked back for a little help. He said, I'm going to try to make who sound like an idiot up there. I'm going to fake hey, That's not hard. <laughs> well, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> I've been inclined to think it more than once, but I never said that. Just Thanks, first and Bob. five. Bob will happen to Jim Hoos with you. Ball on the 33. Mazer tries to get outside to the right. Mazer got the ball. Slight opening and picked up a couple. Yeah, Teresa, number 20, the strong safety came up, put the hit on Mazer. You know, uh, Pace really relies on that secondary to help out on the tackles. They've got to get their linebackers the involved. Second and five from the 30. Three. Kevin Callahan all wired up. In the second quarter, and notice John this is a big game. Monmouth came zero. back with a big victory last week against St. Francis. This is a game that Monmouth should win. And sometimes they're the hardest ones to put in the win column. Major up the middle. And Major carried the ball. Close to the first down, but a little bit short. Right up the one hole between the center Rico and the right guard, 58 Morano. So a timeout Official on the field. Timeout. Officials timeout. Let's see if they're going to measure. So that was close to the first down. And they call out the chain. Yeah, Major's got big, big side, two ones, five. They got it. And yep. the first down, first down Mammoth. Mazer's carry got it just inside the 28 yard line, and that was enough for a first down. Mammoth leading it 7 to nothing. We're in the first quarter, a minute 20 to play. Sabella, the quarterback, first and 10 from the 28, and the handoff, and getting outside, number 26, Kristopic, Kristopic so on this drive, ball. Jimmy, it's Kristopic handling the football, early on we saw Tackle Mitch Mano, and that's one of the, the real assets this Monmouth University football team has, a lot of depth of running back. Tremendous depth, fresh legs, keep coming at you, shuttle them in, shuttle them out, they really do a good job. Uh, you can see that Sabella really has a hard count because that defensive front for Pace is really coming off. Uh, they're jumping, they're not watching the ball, they're trying to go by sound, and they're going to get themselves in trouble doing that. Second down, six yards to go, ball on the 24.
And the handoff, Mazur looks to cut back, and a good little cutback move for the big fellow there, Jim, to pick up a couple. He wanted to go outside to the right, but then had to come back. One, one, one. Number 87, uh, Dave Monroe, uh, saw him in motion. He was the lead blocker. He's the other tight end. And uh, tried to go outside, nothing there. Good pursuit by Pace. Lamar Williams and number 23, Chris Cervona. And once again, the officials protecting the football, and that's the reason why, waiting for the Claxton, the horn to end the first quarter. Mammoth University football on TV 34, one quarter complete with Mammoth leading the pace by the score of seven to nothing for West Long Branch, New Jersey. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this. Four. Sabella drops, fires, pass complete across the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. The reception made by Ralph O'Neill. I'll tell you, Lamar Williams, number 78, the nose guard for Pace, was right in Sabella's face. He is 6'1, 295. You know, Sabella saw him come and had to get rid of that ball. Good catch by O'Neill. So O'Neill jogs out after making that reception. And the ball on the five-yard line, so it's first and goal from the five for Mammoth, with Mammoth leading it 7 nothing. And a handoff to Major. He bounces off a couple of tacklers, gets inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Yeah, this is where this offensive line, a veteran offensive line, is really going to uh, come into play. We're going to shuttle in a bunch of uh, backs. We're going to take a look again. Uh, Little Williams coming up that Sabella really gives him a hit. Uh, Second main goal from the three. There's number 31, O'Neill getting up field. But again, this offensive line has got to get up the ball. They've got to create the holes, and they've got to put the ball in the end zone. You're in the red zone. You've got to get it in. Second and goal at the two-and-a-half-yard line. Sabella ducks under center. Long count. Hands it off to the inside. Touchdown, Mammoth. Jim Barrick, the fullback, with the carry. Barrick just kept rolling his way. It looked like he was stopped, and he fell forward into the end zone. That's a good run by Barrick. He went over the left side where 56 Birdie and 77 Murphy the tackle. Uh, had a little hole, kept his legs, kept sliding to the outside, slide, slide, find the hole, get in the end zone. So 13-0, Mammoth leading it here in the beginning of the second quarter. 14.06 remaining in the half. And the snap, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. Good job right there by number 12, the holder, Rich Barglowski, to field that low snap, Jimmy. Good execution there by Barglowski. Barrett kept his concentration and knocked it through. Yeah, Barglowski, the 17th quarterback. Uh, we saw him last week for State Branch. He did a decent job. Here's a touchdown. One more touchdown. Watch Barrett. Slide, slide. Keep your feet. Little roll. In the end zone. So that touchdown makes it 14 nothing. Mama's leading it early here in the second quarter. Two and one on and the season. Anywhere. Make your and Pace goes into this game at 0 oh and 2. So Pace really needs a victory big time. But if you look at the history books, as we said in the open, Jim, Pace is in trouble here, having dropped the, the last two games and there. The two games in the series between these two clubs have been shut out both times. Right. They're not a come from behind team. And uh, they, they've got to score some points in the second quarter if they hope to get back in this game. Receive a for so Jim Barrick, number 29, just scored the touchdown. Knocked through the point after. And now he'll kick it off, so the all-purpose back. Showing all of his skills on the last play. And here's the kickoff. And at the seven-yard line. Trying to get outside, right up the middle was number 21 of Pace University. That was Brett Hartman. Hartman had those legs driving all the way. Yeah, he, he's a competitor. He really works hard. Tried to get upfield. Give him a lot of credit. Good hustle. Went up the middle, then reared it out to the right. Pretty good return. 
Third down for Pace from the 30-yard line. Pace will take over first and 10 from their own 30-yard line, trailing it by 14. You look at the size of some of the offensive linemen for uh, Pace, Jim, and they got some big dudes up there. Oh, yeah, very big. We'll talk about it after this play. Inside handoff, and a pickup of maybe a half a yard, probably no gain. The entire Mammoth front doing a job on that play. Yeah, you talk about the offensive line for Pace, 79, uh, Moreska is 300, 6'3", 300, 73, Stowers, 6'1", 240, Vital, the center, uh, 6'3", 300, Odell, the other guard, the smallest one, 215, the other tackle, Basso, 275, so a lot of beef. You got a lot of beef there, but you need a little bit of quickness also, and perhaps the uh, Mama defensive guys a little bit quicker getting the jump on him. O'Connor's pass intended for number 88 and smothered by Michael James came up to make the play against Frank Bucci. Yeah, Bucci's got to make that catch. You're down, the ball hits you in the hands. You got to make a nice play by Michael James to recover and come up and make a hit. But again, Bucci's got to help out his team and make that catch. So it'll be third and 10 from the pace 30 yard line. O'Connor under the center and hands it off on the draw play and nothing there at all as that is shut down a loss on the play of maybe a half a yard. Yeah, Billy Smith, the fullback, got the call. Uh, Mom is just really crowding the ball right now. They have, uh, they have eight men within five yards of the uh, line of scrimmage and they are coming after him. The 79 Moresca for Pace. He's 6300. And what, what Pace is trying to do is have their offensive line get out there and lay on you, but you know, you can't commit those turnovers and you got to move the ball. Three turnovers in the first half already for Pace. Pace will have to kick it away here. Back at the 15 yard line. And a high punt. Back to the 32 yard line. And no room at all right there on the return for Steve Cavello. There's a flag on the point. And a flag on the play out at about the midfield stripe. So Cavello made the reception. Really had no room at all to come back with much of a return. Cavello wears number four. Cavello was knocked out of bounds at the 39 yard line. So we'll see where the referees put it. It's a clipping call goes against Mammoth. Clipping against Mammoth. So that's going to march it back. Back into Mammoth territory with Monmouth leading at 14 to nothing. We're in the second quarter, 12-27 left in the half. Yeah, this is going to really march it back. And, you know, when you're, when you're recovering, uh, you know, the punt, you got to see those numbers to be able to block the guys who are coming from the other team. And if you don't, yeah, don't hit them. Was off from the point where was in that down. first quarter, Medrano led ball. all rushers. Four carries for 49 yards, an average of 11.8. He'll take those numbers, I think. Oh, yeah. Sabella the quarterback, first and ten. Ball at the 25. The handoff to Francis. He gets to the outside, across the 25, and knocked down. Nice tackle right there by Jamie Valachano. Uh, number 20, Steve, or Jeff, excuse me, Teresa came up, strong safety, forced it outside. And then Balciano came up and made the tackle. They picked up about eight yards on that play, so it'll be called second down. Make that a pickup of about two, make it second down and about eight. Sabella fakes the handoff and finds Finer right at the 40-yard line, almost sprung it loose up the sideline. About two more yards of width on the field, and he was gone. The Finer's got good speed from Jackson. Uh, he's a hard-nosed football player. Take a look at Sabella, nice pass, having a good day. He's getting great protection, has all day to throw the ball. He's a lot of good to the offensive line. That's right, in the first quarter, Sabella was seven out of 10 for 53 yards. Take another look at it, slow it down all day. Sees Finer out there in the flat. You said it, Bob. Those two yards, finer has gone. First and ten, we'll call it the 40-yard line. Isabella hands it off to Mazur, and Mazur stopped for no gain. 
Major is tackled by number 23, really Chris Savona. Looked like he knew what he was doing. No he threw up the line, almost stopped, tried to cut it back, and was just dead in the water. Well, Major, interesting style. He's a big guy, Jimmy, and, and he's powerful, but sometimes you'll see him try to do what the scat backs like to do, is feel the contact, bounce, pull back a half a step, and then go wide. That time it didn't work. <laughs> Put your head down and keep going forward. Run people over. So second and ten. Finer is in motion. Sabella hands it off to Francis. Francis again looking to get to the outside and somehow found a little bit of a seam there. Broke through and got it out about to the 48 yard line. That's a heck of a run right there. Yeah, right at the end too, to keep your feet going, keep your balance, and get close to the first down. Well, it looked like he was stopped and he managed yeah. to pick up about six yards, but not enough. So it'll be third down and a long one. Ball on the Mammoth 48 yard line. Mammoth leading it 14 to nothing. The story three turnovers by Pace here in the first half already. And Madrano back into the game, takes the handoff and gets out across the 50. But Mike Madrano, he's a bit of a fire plug. He is quick and gets those legs moving. Nice run by Madrano. First down, Mammoth. As an offensive lineman, you love Madrano because he gets up and he hits the holes right away when they open. And it, and it shows from his work effort he gets the first down. Madrano only 5'6", but goes about 180. So Mammoth has it inside of Pace territory at the 49, first and 10. Sabella drops back, pass completed. Nice little move after the reception there by Garbolino. The pass is completed to Garbolino. Uh, Garbolino, the tight end. Good hands, knows what to do. He catches the ball and then spins back to the inside where he knows he's not going to get hit. And picks up some extra yards and makes the first down. And that's right, picked up about five extra. Pace University. The ball settled on the Pace 38-yard line, and Pace has to call timeout, trailing at 14-0 here in the second quarter. So, Jim, a good, solid uh, effort so far by Mammoth. They forced three turnovers already and managed to uh, pick up the 14 to nothing lead. Yeah, Mammoth's defense is playing real well. They're all over kind of the quarterback uh, from Pace. And then their offense is moving the ball. Their, their offensive line is hitting the holes, uh, making the holes, uh, getting off the ball. They're shuttling in. They're running backs. A lot of people carrying the ball. Hey, it's a machine. It's going. Uh, they just want to keep it going. And they're going right down the field right now. Well, in the first quarter, the really only the effective offensive play was the one run by Coleman. He went 39 yards and uh, sprung it loose. It looked like Pace might have something going, but the defense shut them down. Other than that, uh, defensively, Mammoth has been all over Pace. Yeah, well, we're halfway through the second quarter, and, you know, Pace cannot give up another touchdown. Their defense has really got to throw it off right now. Barrick tried a 22-yard field goal, missed it wide to the left. Barrick has scored a touchdown and put in uh, two PATs. The other touchdown scored by Ralph O'Neill on a one-yard plunge for Mammoth. So they lead it 14-0, second quarter. Mammoth has it at the pace 38-yard line, first and 10. Lone setback was Medrano. Play action, Sabella goes to the end zone. What a catch, touchdown, Mammoth. The reception made by Bill Kelleher. and Kelleher, he runs the post. He had number three, Feliciano, on top, man-to-man -man coverage, and he run, outruns him to the touchdown. A heck of a throw by Sabella. Again, way protection up front. Good call by Coach Kevin Callahan. With a little play action, they fake the handoff to Madrano, and as you said, the post pattern wide open, and it was a good catch. And that makes it 20 to nothing. Mammoth on top, Kelleher with the TD reception. Barglowski is the holder. Farrick will attempt the point after. And the kick is up, and the kick is good by Barrick. So Barrick looking solid on the point after. He's kicked three in a row, and Bauman comfortably ahead 21-0 with plenty of time left in the first half. Well, we're going to see the touchdown again. Keller 
He's to the left, but wide to the left. Run the post right down the middle of the field. He's in man to man with Jimmy Vessel and Aliano. Number three. And just a heck of a pass by Sabella. Well, Keller had to just slow down and step the pass yeah. slightly behind, but he had beaten his defender. Good concentration and gathered it in for the touchdown. About a 38 yard TD, Sabella to Keller. Today's game can be seen on cable vision of Marvel TV. So 21-0. Once again, watch the replay of the Marvel TV. There's about five minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the first half. And Barrick will kick it off. I'll tell you what, Pace is, that's a tough one to come back from now. 21-0. Their offense really hasn't gotten it going today. They've had one play, as you mentioned, Bob. Uh, they've got to put together a drive here and eat up some of this clock. And Brent Hartman. So Varick will kick. And here's the kick. Smith is back deep, and that one's going to run into the end zone. That'll be a touchback, and they'll bring it out to the 20. So Varick made sure that Julius Smith, number four, didn't get his hands on it. Smith had returned one for a touchdown last week against Stony Brook for 88 yards. Yeah, he is dangerous. Uh, take a look at Barrick right there. Good leg. Three for three with the PATs. Gets a good kick. Puts pace at their own 20. So Jimmy Varrick, a six foot, 200 pound senior, had a good career here at Monmouth. And Monmouth leading it by 21 right here in the second quarter. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, I don't think they're going to kick this again. I didn't see it go out of bounds. And the referee did signal touchback. Well, we've got the old do-over play. Yeah. So there was a penalty against Pace. That's why. And Mom is going to kick it over from the 30. Offsides was the call against Pace on the kickoff. So Varick... Gains five yards and will try to kick it again. Interesting, he already kicked it into the end zone once. This one is a knuckler and picked up by Smith. And Smith trying to break it, gets it out to the 30. And finally, sworn to fumble, recovered by Mammoth. Smith was fighting his way. Had three or four guys on him just when he was ready to go to the ground. They stripped him and came loose. And that decision pays off. Mammoth forces another turnover. Well, if you notice, Smith, when he grabbed the ball, had a little trouble handling the knuckler. And then when he started to feel, the ball was away from his body. We're going to see it again. See that ball? Now, there's all the little Mammoth defenders going after it. That's number 19. It's Monday. A good strip. Monday figured I don't have to tackle. Yeah. The other guys will do the tackle. I'll go after the ball. Grand larceny, and he got away with it. Who said crime doesn't pay? <laughs> First and 10 from the 30. Sabella drops back. And that one incomplete. It looked like wide open. Was Polakowski with the pass incomplete? Well, Polakowski, he had that ball. He's <laughs> number three. Feliciano, Feliciano did a complete 360. He was faked down on that play. He was trying to read Sabella, the quarterback. And there's a flag on the field, but that was a nice play by Mammoth. Good pass by Sabella. And you're right, Sabella put the pass right there. But it looks like they're marching yardage off against the Mammoth University Hawks. And once again, a holding call. And that'll make it first and 20 from the pace 40-yard line. Well, as a, as a coach, you hate to see that because you got your offense on the field, they're, they're working well, and then you get that penalty, the holding call, the cringe. So Holder splits wide to the right. Sabella drops back, throws it across the middle, oh. and that pass off the mark intended for number 88, Garbolino. And I think Sabella fortunate that that one wasn't intercepted. Yeah, I'll tell you what, how about Reed Sands, number two? <laughs> Great tackle. He came up and really hit a You know what happened? Sands was oh. saying, I'm going to make the hit. He wasn't worrying about the yeah. football. Had he gone for the ball, he may have had an interception. But I, Sands I likes agree. to hit. Yeah, he, he likes to get his face mask in there. <laughs> Second and 20 from the 40. Holder this time splits wide to the left. Medrano set back. Sabella drops back, and a deflection caught by Varick. 
And they picked up about five yards. Five yards as Barrick was right there. One of those easy ones that came off the hands of his own player, actually. Watch it right here. Let's see whose hands it comes yeah. off of. Let's take a look. There's Barrick. Holder. Came off of Holder's hands. And a uh, you know, nice little touch pass back yeah. to Barrick. And number nine, Krumdiak, uh, the end, it dropped off in the coverage. He had an interception, or so he thought, so Holder came back for the ball. Good play by William Holder, number 10. You're right, Jimmy. Had Holder just stayed and waited for the football, he wouldn't have gotten there. So it goes as a five-yard pickup. Third and 15. Sabella drops back. Intended for Holder, the pass short. And that's incomplete, defending on that play. Number 21, Brett Hartman. But Holder went out to the right, tried to come back for it, and the pass was a little bit too short. He couldn't get to it. Sabella unhappy with himself on that toss. Yeah. And Sabella knows it because he has plenty of time to throw the ball. He was, he's looking over at Coach Dallin, and they can go for it. And then the coach sends out a punting team. So Mammoth will kick it away, leading it by the score of 21 to nothing. 316 left in the half. Bargloski is the punter. Bargloski. Fair catch being signaled. And the catch made by number 80 for Pace University. And that was their return man, Billy Mentikitis. And I don't know, Mentikitis comes the fair catch. Well, at the 10-yard line, I guess he was afraid if it took the wrong bounce, to yeah. get him a little bit deeper rather than let that one go into the end zone. Dangerous, though. If he doesn't make that catch, I'll tell you what, it might be 28 nothing. Pace has turned it over four times in the first half. And the Pace setters right now not setting the pace at all. First and 10 from the 10-yard line of Pace. And this is going to be Smith carrying up the middle for a gain of maybe one. Mammoth defense not going with the play action fakes at all, and they're just almost keying on Smith up the middle. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, if you, if you see right before the play, number 97, Stinson, the outside linebacker, the other outside linebacker, Mendez, 55, and Berkey, the inside, 43. They are on top of the ball. They're a yard off the ball. They know the ball is coming right up the gut to Smith. As you said, Bob, they're keying on him. And, I mean, 97, Stinson was in the backfield before Smith even got the ball. So they pick up a half a yard, and that makes it tough. Now you're at second and nine uh, with not much breathing room at all. Stinson on the right side, look for the pass. And again, the defense swarming. Picked up a couple of more. Number 46, uh, Gamero, the other left end, makes the tackle. Craig Altieri is the quarterback, number eight. Altieri, a 5'10", 185-pound sophomore. Big number 46 for a mom with Jason Gamitter. And I'll tell you, he's had a big game already with a sack. Yeah. And he's just all over the place. Altieri, the quarterback, 0 for 1 throwing on the season. And it doesn't look like Pace is going to throw the football. They're just trying to get it out of danger, and they're going to punt it away. Altieri in there to make sure that the handoffs are made, and that's it. Now that's interesting. Now uh, Altieri comes in, he's a sophomore, and Connor's out. Possibly Connor has something happened to his hand. Uh, he has two uh, fumbles, but he's just run the ball into the uh, yeah, run the ball right into the line and then put it away. Three minutes to go. Low snap. And is he going to get it off? No, he's not going to get it off. Taken down. Close to a safety. At the two-yard line, Mammoth will take that's over. That's First that's and that's goal that's from the two. Line. They tried to punted away. Chris Chapa couldn't feel the low snap. It was a short hopper, and Chapa did well just to pick it up. But Mama swarms. Chapa goes down. Mama takes over. First and goal from the two-yard line of Pace University. Well, I don't know what Chapa's doing because he almost uh, ran it back into the end zone. you got to go forward. You're that close to the end line. I'll tell you what, and when it rains, it pours for uh, Pace. So Pace tried to kick it away. And unable to do it, so Mammoth, they score this one. They can pretty much put this one away already, the way they've dominated in the first half. Sabella hands it off, and over the top, touchdown, Mammoth. Number 31, Ralph O'Neill. Again, the short yardage man picks it up. That's his second touchdown 
of the game. Yeah, baby, he found his big uh, right tackle, Dominic Coniglio. Uh, there's O'Neal, and that is the knockout punch. 28 to nothing. Now, you see that in the last uh, couple seasons, Pace is not a team that comes back well. And I'll tell you, take advantage of the turnovers. So O'Neal scores his second touchdown on a two-yard run. A one-second drive, that was. Yeah. <laughs> One play, <laughs> two yards. That could be a record. That, that may be the fastest drive I've seen. One play, one second. Barglowski puts it down. The kick is up. And no good. Barrett misses it wide to the right. So with 6.13 to play, 27-0, Mammoth leads it. Watch it again right here. And O'Neal loves going over that right side. There's 44 majors leading the way. Jump in, touchdown. Easy. 27 nothing. first half, and Jim Hoos will have plenty of stories to tell us in the second half, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it looks like uh, this crowd right now. Take a look. Everybody's heading out to the tailgate. Well, 27 nothing. it is Parent Day here at Monmouth University, and a big crowd on hand, and a lot of families are here, and people will be tailgating, and the refreshment stands will be booming. And why not get a hot dog uh, if you're a spectator on top 27 nothing? Monmouth just burying the setters of Pace University. Varick will kick it off. They'd say it would be a little bit early to talk that way, but judging by the way things have gone here in the first half, Mama just has too much for this Pace University yeah. team. You're going to kick it off the Pace. You're going to try and put something together, but Mama, they can really gamble. They have their linebackers right on top of the ball. You're not going to run against that kind of a defense. And quite frankly, Pace's offensive line has not kept uh, the rush out, and he can't throw the ball. So Varick will kick it. Smith and Hartman are the deep backs for Pace. And that's one thing that Pace could need right here, Jimmy, to get him back a little bit would be a long run, but Barrick's not going to allow that as he kicks it into the end zone for a touchback. There's Julius Smith right there. As you mentioned, Smith ran one back, a kickoff back 88 yards last week against Stony Brook, and Barrick knows it. Yeah. Barrick got all of that one again. Put it in the end zone, put your defense back on the field. Be interesting to see who comes out to play quarterback for Pace in this series. Well, I think O'Connor is back yep. in. Altieri just was on the field, but he just went back to the bench. And it is O'Connor back at quarterback, number 10. And Smith carries it across. Smith carries the ball. Picked up a couple. Tackle by Mendez. Well, Mendez on the tackle, but there's the big fella, Smith. They've done a good job shutting him down. Yeah, and uh, you know, Smith, he can get the ball upfield. He, he's, you know, really relying on the offensive line to get off the ball. Big guys, they should be able to get a push. So it'll be second and seven for Pace. Trailing at 27 to nothing in the first half. O'Connor ducks under center. Drops back, and again he's going down. And a flag on the play, probably a face mask, as his mask he was sacking O'Connor. He may have gotten his hand inside the mask. Yeah, his hands were up. He got that mask, definitely. So the ref threw that flag immediately. But a great push by his mask. Nobody's guarding. I mean, you got to get out there and get on that. Well, here it is. This is a rollout, and the, the guard never gets out there to pin down his mask. Too quick. Personal foul. Goes against Mamet. There's a personal foul grabbing the face mask. So it is a face mask penalty against his Mansky. And what looked like a sack turns into a gain for Pace. Well, Pace gets lucky. And that's a big one all the way out to the Pace 38 yard line. So the personal foul hurts Mamet. First down Pace. And you hear the reaction of some of the Mammoth fans. They didn't like that call. It would be interesting to see if Pace can throw the ball up in the air this time. Send it long. You're out of danger. Well, Sabella's going to have to make that O'Connor. 
inside handoff to Smith. Nothing there. If O'Connor wants time, uh, Jimmy, I think he's just going to have to roll out to buy time for himself. Hope that he can get away from the yeah. on-rushing uh, defensive lineman. Amon. I agree. Maybe a gadget play. This is Baskey, 59. You're not going to run the ball. I mean, uh, Billy Smith, number 33, their fullback, he's a pounding type of runner. He's not speed. And uh, if you have, you can go against eight people on top of the line of scrimmage, you're not going to gain anything. And also probably forget some play action, keep Smith back to block for him. Yeah. But uh, they need more than that right now. Mammoth just really attacking. This time O'Connor unloads on the short one. The reception is made out across the 50 and finally taken down was Damian Coleman. And Coleman with a nice catch and fought his way across the 50 to the Mammoth 49, first and 10 for Pace. Yeah, well, you get the ball in Coleman's hands. He can run the ball. He's got good speed. And that's the only way you're going to possibly uh, defeat some of the pressure of Monmouth. Short passes, quick release. That time coming right across was Coleman. So first and 10 for Pace. And they hand it off to Smith. And now they faked me out. It didn't go to Smith, so good ball work right there. On the carry was Jason Lang. Yeah, well, Pace ran again. They ran the uh, the tackle trap. And that play uh, sprang calm into the first quarter. That's a good play for them. So Lang gets it out to the 39-yard line of Monmouth. Another first down for Pace. And O'Connor has his team on the move. 4.20 to play in the half. O'Connor drops back, releases quickly, and the catch made by number 80. Nice catch by Philly Mentikidis out of Irvington, New York, a split in 5'9", 170 pounder. Well, this is what uh, head coach uh, Greg Lasardi likes. Short passes, uh, mixing it up, pass run, pass run, and sustain a drive. You've got to wear off some of that clock, heat it up, get down the field. Well, Give your defense a little rest, too. That's right. Mentikitis to split end. Quick pass by O'Connor, and Mentikitis coming back to the football. And it's second and five. O'Connor rolls, puts it underneath, and swarmed under. A loss of about one on the play. O'Connor knew he had nowhere to go and tucked it under and tried to pick up whatever he could out of that. Yeah, O'Connor put the ball away. <laughs> Hold on to that ball. Well, that's frustrating, where every time you, you look to roll, as soon as you look up, all you see is a sea of blue coming at you. It's like, oh, my Lord, here they come again. And at that point, you just have to salvage what you can. Oh, definitely. And, uh, it'll now be third and four from the Mama 33. Big play right here for Pace. They need to get on the scoreboard. They trail at 27 to nothing. O'Connor drops, rolls right. Out to the 35 and up to about the 31 yard line, and a penalty flag goes flying. And we may have a personal foul against Mammoth. Yeah, O'Connor, you can see paying the price on that. They leave the flag right there. Well, defensive coordinator Andy Bobbitt for Mammoth, he, he's got his outside linebackers coming hard up the field. Uh, really not going to let uh, O'Connor get outside, contain everything, and, and then have your, your front five, your, your linebackers and uh, your, uh, your defensive ends and tackles come hard. So yet another penalty, personal foul once again against Mammoth. So he had a face mask and another personal foul here, moves it all the way down to the Mammoth 15. And that was on number 92. I mean, he's out of the game. He's going to get a, an airfall right now. You, you can't have sloppy play when you're up this many points. First and 10 from the 15. Altieri back in at quarterback. Carries it himself. Gets out just across the 15-yard line, maybe to the 14. Altieri, as we mentioned, the backup quarterback, Jimmy, not known for his passing. 0 no. for 1 on the season, and I'm sure Monmouth has scouted that. And they know that Altieri is not the kind of guy to throw the football too often. Yeah, and you're going to see, you're going to probably see 11 guys from Monmouth within the uh, within five yards of the football. 5'10", 185-pound sophomore is the quarterback, Craig Altieri. Second and eight from the 13 of Monmouth. And Monmouth calls timeout. 
So that's exactly, Jimmy, what they're probably going to talk about now. Should we send everyone or are we going to forget about the pass? We're going to forget about it. We'll, uh, move some guys up a little tighter and try to shut down the run. Kevin Callahan talking things over. Yeah, well, they've had a lot of success. That's uh, Vinny Sasso, number 23, the free safety. He's telling Sasso to drop back, uh, probably go man-to-man -man on the corners, and then to send everybody. Get there and uh, make uh, Altieri, the new quarterback, number eight, the sophomore, throw the ball in a hurry. So you always wonder when defense calls timeout like that, is that an advantage to the offense where they go over and decide what they want to do also? Well, I, I, you know, in a, in a close game, yeah, I think it would be an advantage to the offense. But in this type of game, I mean, Mammoth can really afford to give up a touchdown. They don't want to. There's a lot of pride on that defense to get the shutout. But they can afford it. So, hey, call the timeout. Make sure you know what you're doing and, and really come with a, a play. Second and eight from the 13. Of the timeout that Mammoth has just called. O'Connor back in at quarterback. O'Connor. Flags go flying. Handoff and no gain. The ball carried that time by number 28, Damian Coleman. But the flags went early, and it's going to be a motion penalty against Pace, so that'll really hurt them as they'll march them back five yards. Uh, you really can't have it. You can't go out on a timeout, talk things over, know what you're going to do, and then come out and have somebody uh, you know, jump or not know the snap count. It's unacceptable. They may be declining the penalty. It is declined, so Mama's showing a lot of confidence yeah. in their defense. Declines that penalty, third and eight from the 13-yard line. So they take the play rather than the penalty. That's confidence down in that area. Yeah, and they're taking out Berkey, the middle linebacker. They're going to insert five defensive backs. Third down, eight yards to go from the 13. O'Connor drops, pressure on O'Connor. Steps away oh. from one. Oh, he gets sandwiched, loose ball, fumble. And I think recovered by pace, but O'Connor got cheese staked right there. <laughs> Bang, between two guys, and fumbled that one away. Oh, I mean, football's about hitting, and Stinson, number 97, Ooh. came up hard, missed him. <laughs> Robert Ward, number 99. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, you saw the penalty signal, but you know Mama's going to decline that one. So two motion penalties in a row against Pace, and Mama declines them both. I'll tell you what, that's going to make O'Connor a little bit uh, shaky the rest of the game. And every time he drops back, he's not looking for receivers. He's just waiting to get free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Offensive line has got to give him better protection than that. Coach Lasardi. So Coach Lasardi calls timeout. <laughs> you see Connor, he's walking over with his head a little down. You know, gee, somebody, uh, you know, block somebody out there for me. Give me a little time. So Connor's looking for Alteria. You want to go out there? <laughs> the, the, uh, the shot of the, uh, the mom at the side. Uh, those guys are happy, looking good, having a good time. 27 to nothing, Mammoth on top of Pace University. It's Parents Day here at Kessler Field in West Long Branch. TV 34, happy to be with you. Bob Lampin and Jim Moves up in a press box. The sun is shining. Everybody, if you're a Mammoth fan, having a good time today, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you can tell uh, the defense is about to record the shutout. They're going to be coming hard if Pace decides to go for the, uh, the field goal. Pace has called the timeout, trailing it 27 0. So they'll have it fourth and 13. O'Connor is still in there. And O'Connor, by this point, I'm sure, realizes he's got about three seconds to drop back. He can roll for about three steps, and any better run loader is going to get hit. Go for the timing pattern, go for the end zone. Mammoth loading up with defensive back. So Connor drops back, knows he has to throw it, steps up in the pocket, can't get away, and Mammoth takes him down, and Mammoth will take over. That's the problem. Fourth and long with all those defensive backs in there. Five guys defending in pass receiving area. It's virtually impossible. Connor couldn't find anyone open. Yeah, you know, you have the pump four coming hard to the man. 59 in the end. Ritter, 46 in the end. So you got the time for Toomey and Ward. Hey, you're just not going to get away, and there's going to be no pocket to step up in. 
Lama takes over inside of a minute remaining in the half. Sabella hands it off to the outside and still on his feet, number 31, driving and driving for Lama. O'Neill, not known for his speed, that no, line no, broke no, it, made no, no. to the power. And a big pickup for O'Neill. Yeah, and that's what uh, Coach Noyes teaches their, their tailbacks and their fullbacks. Put that head down, keep the legs driving, don't stop. Because a lot of times the defender will not wrap up, which just happened, and he gets another 10 yards. Good run by O'Neill. Got it out to the 33. First and 10. Sabella drops back being hounded and sets it up to Medrano. Medrano out across midfield, down the sideline, still on his feet, across the 40 to the 35. Bumble on the play, recovered by Mahmoud. Medrano really scrapped for everything. He quickly came up with his own bumble. Good run. He got a Mahmoud Randy screen right in the middle. It's just a nice play. Great composure by Sabella. Set the screen up, waited for the defensive players to get right in his face, unloaded to the little guy, Medrano. He took care of the rest. And Sabella grounds the football to stop the clock. Take a look at the last play. Screen right in the center. There's Medrano. Now he gets to the outside. Look, keep the feet moving. Keep the feet moving. Scrap. Oh, helmet on the ball. Ball comes loose, but Medrano got his own recovery. 33 seconds remaining in the half. Mammoth on top by 27. They want to get in the end zone once more before the half to definitely salt this one away. Sabella drops, rolls, looks, and throws. Holder with the completion. Fights his way out of bounds at about the 18-yard line, make it the 22-yard line. Yeah, a real smart play by Holder. He saw the first down mark. I don't know if he got it. A little short, it looks like, but a smart play and to get out of bounds. And here it is again. The ball is about the ball is day to throw the football. Now, had he not had the clock as his enemy at that point, Holder would have tried to cut it back to the inside oh, sure. looking for pay dirt, but made the smart move. Here's Sabella looking to the end zone, throws for Finer, and he overthrows it. Fellas really looking for that touchdown. About fourth and two right now. All for a long one. Took it to send Barrick out though. So it is fourth down. About 15 seconds to play in the half. And Barrick will look to pick up three from the 32 yard line. Barglowski, the holder. The ball is down, the kick is partially blocked, and that'll be short. Actually, is there, can something be partially blocked? It's either blocked or it's not blocked. <laughs> Some would call it a block. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, I've heard that for you. That's partially true. blocked. What does that mean? It means you didn't get it full in the face. Instead, you just got your hand. You got a finger instead of hand, yeah. That's it. But uh, nonetheless, the kick was short. And Monmouth unable to pick up three on the field goal. They lead it 27-0. Pace will take over. And I have to figure Pace is just going to sit down on this one. Let it run out. Put a knee down. Get in the locker room. Regroup. Well, O'Connor's out there unless he's just going to throw it up. Now, he's, he takes the wise choice there. And they'll go to the locker room with the Monmouth University Hawks enjoying a 27 to nothing lead over the centers of Pace University. Pace has to be disheartened as they turned it over four times in the first half. Well, Bobby, I'll tell you, you know, Mom and the defense playing real well, coming after the ball offensively. Hey, Sabella all day to throw. The line's playing real well. Backs are running extremely well. They look like they're having a good time out there. Pace, on the other hand, they're not enjoying this at all. You ever have a good time when you were down 27-0? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're really getting beat up out there. They're, they're going to try right now to come back and see if they can maybe work a gadget play, just get on the board. 27-0, Monmouth leading the Pace University setters on TV 34 is Monmouth University Football 96. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Kessler Field on the campus of Monmouth University in West Long Branch, where at halftime, Monmouth on top of Pace University, 27 to nothing. Bob Lampinen and Jim Hoos with you. And Jim, of course, uh, 27 nothing, a huge lead. And let's take a look at some huge statistics right here. Well, I mean, these are the halftime statistics. First down, Monmouth 13, Pace 6. Uh, that's the offensive line. Look at the rushing yards, passing yards, the total yards. I mean, it's just Monmouth is dominating uh, in the first half. And then the biggest statistic of the whole thing is the turnovers, whole game. Four turnovers in the first half. They cannot have that happen in the second half, or they're just, I mean, they're going to have a real tough time coming back as it is, but you cannot turn the ball over. Couldn't agree more at 27 nothing. Uh, Monmouth just has to go out there and play error free football, you can keep it conservative, and Kevin Callahan wants to make sure that his players get a run. They've got to get enough time out there to work on things. But uh, sometimes in games like this, if you don't go out there early and you get a little bit lazy, the team gets one and you make a mistake and they can creep back. Uh, that's kind of, I think, what Pace is hoping, to shut Monmouth down, maybe get a touchdown, pick up a turnover somewhere, and find a way to come back in. Uh, last week, uh, Pace was getting beat pretty bad as we look across the way. Coach Greg Lasardi's team came back. They lost to 27-21, but uh, they came back in the second half. I think he's hoping for more of the same here in the second half. And second half kickoff picked up for Pace University on the run. Quick move by number four, the Pace University run back specialist, Julius Smith. Julius, an 88-yard TD uh, run back last week, but not so far today. Well, you know, Coach Callahan, was, he's probably really yelling at his defense to stay in the game, stay up, don't get lethargic, come after the ball hard, hit hard, cover well, and they are going to be all over this football right now. They're allowed to take chances. They're up. Big score. Pace could be in trouble. they got to sustain a drive on this first drive of the second quarter, or third, third quarter, excuse me. O'Connor in there at quarterback and hands it off to Smith. It's a fumble. And recovered by Mammoth. So picked up by Mammoth University's number nine, and that's Stacy Dixon. Smith picked, had picked up about five yards as he was going down and came loose. And Dixon right there for the recovery. Turnover number five. Yeah, well, Stacy Dixon playing that strong safety position. Uh, Smith is there still is. down. Now let's see if he gets hurt, a knee or something. Ball gets stripped out of there. Ooh, look on that replay. He might have been down before it came yeah, loose. Yeah, the knees might have been down. But I was just harping on it. You can't commit the turnovers and, and give Mom at the great field position. So much for that long drive. You said that yeah. Pace needs to get things going here in the second half. But right now, a bigger concern to Pace University is the condition of Smith, their running back, Billy Smith, a 5'11", 233-pound senior, a Division II All-America candidate. And on the first play from scrimmage in the second half, Let's hope that it's not a knee. They're checking the yeah. knee out. And, of course, Greg Lasardis, the head coach of Pace, right out there. Well, you hope it's just a sprain or, you know, when you come down on it, you just get a big bruise or something. Hopefully nothing's torn. And that is really unfortunate. So Smith is shaken up. Second half has just gotten started, 14.43 remaining, and they'll help Smith off the field. Billy Smith, 5'11", 233 pounds. And he's already wearing a knee brace on that knee, so it's probably... Uh, that does not look uh, good. So Smith leaves, and he is really their main offensive weapon, and that is really going to make it tough for Pace here in the third quarter trailing it by 27 already. You can see uh, not too much enthusiasm on the sideline. There's more concern on the face of Smith's teammates there. And Greg Lasardis, his team at 0-2, looking for a victory. Doesn't look like they're going to get it this afternoon. And to the outside, and there's a nice tackle by number seven. Brian Perrone made the tackle. O'Neal with the carry, yeah, a loss on the play. Great hustle by Perrone. O'Neal tried to go to that left side, bounce it back across to the right. And Perrone really got on his horse and tracked O'Neal down. One arm tackle. That's a little strength. So it'll be second and ten for the Mammoth Hawks leading it. 27 nothing early in the third quarter. 
Sabella, the quarterback, drops back. And the pass intended for Finer. Good coverage right there. Sabella thrown into double coverage. Yeah, really uh, not a good pass because uh, Reed Sands, number two, is behind. And number three, uh, Feliciano, uh, was also covering uh, on Finer. Lucky the ball was not intercepted. Sabella looks across to pick up the sign from the bench on the next play. Third and ten from the pace 30. Sabella again to throw. Across the middle, intended for Finer. Touchdown, Mamis. Finer came across the middle. Almost the same. I think it was the same pattern. This time, no double coverage. And Finer gathers it in. Well, it looked like Pace changed the coverage. They were in zone to play before. That's where you get the double coverage. They go back to man. Finer runs the post around the middle of the field. Sabella, perfect pass. Finer's wide open. Result, a touchdown. So here comes the point after. 33 nothing to score right now. Number and 22, Roland. It looks like he's in. All right, Danny Roland to attempt the point after. Kick is up. And it is good. The kick actually by number 32, 32. John Higgerson. Higgerson was out while the rest of the team was inside the locker room at halftime. Higgerson was working with Coach Pat Simpier and on his kicking and uh, evidently paid off. He drilled that one. A little different style, head on. So but, Higgerson yeah. with the PAT. Yeah, Mohammed, 34 to nothing. And that, that drive has really got to please Kevin Callahan. You get the ball back on the turnover, you score immediately. And that's what you have to do if you're a good offense. Get it in the end zone. Take another look right here. Second touchdown pass of the day for Sabella. Yeah, Finers man-to-man, uh, -man, outruns the coverage, wide open. Number 20, Torresetto tries to come over and help. So it's a 30-yard touchdown from Sabella to Finer. 34-0, 13-48 to play in the third quarter, folks. I know it's alumni day and the parents are here and the families are here, but as you said earlier in the first half, the parking lot's going to be more crowded <laughs> than the stands if the game continues to go this way. The uh, tailgaters will be back out in force. <laughs> Finishing up on the uh, bottom of the bag of potato chips and whatever else is out there. <laughs> <laughs> so Mammoth will kick it off. Back for pace. Smith and Hartman. Smith at the four yard line. Across the 15. And swarmed under at about the 20 yard line. Pace will take over, first and 10, from their own 20. Run back by Julius Smith, and they've done a good job against Smith, the 190-pound freshman. He just has had no room to make that first move. Yeah, and it's good coverage by Mom. They're, they're doing everything well. That's what Coach Callahan wants. Cover well on, on the punts and the kickoffs. Just do everything well, minimize on your penalties, and play a good, solid game. O'Connor, the quarterback, first and 10. O'Connor with the keeper and brought down for no gain. Number 55, uh, Mendez, the outside linebacker. And the linebackers, since the uh, start of the second quarter, have really been coming hard on the outside. Uh, let Anthony Berkey, the middle linebacker, just stay at home, cover the middle. And Pace just cannot get outside, whether they're, they're rolling out on a pass or they're or they're trying to run out there. Their best play has been the counter trap. Trap the tackle, go inside. Sabella, 14 of 21 in the first half. He had a big first half for O'Connor in that first half. He was only three out of 14. And this time they get it up across the 25. And there is that trap. They run it inside. It's a lot of motion in the backfield. Come back with the tailback, trap the tackle, and they're, they're making about five yards a pop on that play. Frank Sermonello, the freshman fullback with the carry. Quarterback Kevin O'Connor 
Drops back to throw, flag flying. Pass is complete to number 88, Frank Bucci. Bucci, the 6'2 senior, but flags on the play. And let's see if that takes the completion away. Looks like it's coming back. And it looks like procedure call against Pace, so that'll erase the completion. And when it rains, it pours. Yeah, you know, just nothing working right for Pace right now. And they're, they're, just, they're going the opposite way. There's no positive yards in this drive. It's all negative. So it's a motion call against the Pace University setters. So they mark it off, and it looks like third and about nine from the Pace 26-yard line. O'Connor still in the quarterback. He got roughed up in the first half, but he's tough hanging in there. <laughs> he drops back, looks, throws. They throw short, the pass complete. And out to the 25-yard line, Brian Griffel with the reception. Yeah, Griffel, not good hands, playing fullback. Just sneaks out, makes a reception, and tries to get a field. But you're looking at fourth down, and they have to punt it away. So Griffel made the reception. Gave him a little bit of breathing room, but as you said, Pace will kick this one away. Here in the third quarter from Kessler Field. And the score 34 to nothing. Mammoth on top of Pace. Chris Chapa, the punter. High snap. But Chapa unloads it. Bounces on the 40. And a little bit of a Head start on the return was Steve Covello, but good coverage by Pace. Yeah, good coverage. It, you got to just capitalize on whatever you can do well, and they get down the field and they cover well. But we'll probably see that first team offense come out again and see if they can go down the field. You really can't talk about your second team or your third team until the fourth quarter. You got to give these guys a lot of playing time. That's right. They need their work, especially early in the season. We had talked last week. Uh, Jimmy, after Monmouth came off of the loss the first game of the year to Southern Connecticut, the fact that you need big improvement between week one and two, that yeah. happened, and you want to keep that momentum going, and you only get that way if you play. This is Medrano. Medrano cuts back, gets across the 50 to the 40. He may break this one down to the 20, the 15, the 10. And inside the five-yard line to about the three-yard line, Medrano, the lone back in the formation on that one, took the handoff, found the hole, and I'll tell you, once he gets into the backfield, he's gone. <laughs> he, you can see how much he enjoys running, because he got outside, and man, he was just off to the races. Pretty much the same play we saw in the first half when he broke one, and Medrano with a long gain, the line of scrimmage that time at about the 25, and brings it all the way up inside the five to the two yard line first and goal and there's the handoff it's Mazer he's driving driving and finally wrestled down and great defensive move by Brian Perone that time to wrestle the big guy down yeah how about Perone uh, now we're gonna look at the long run a little that, cut back yeah, move. that's Medrano cut back to the left they're supposed to go right they are going with the trap but there was no pursuit, and that's what allowed Medrano to go back to the left, cut back against the grain, and get that big run. And how about that? you got to talk about number seven, Brian Perone, for pace. I mean, these guys are getting beat up. The defense has been out there all day. Uh, you know, he's up there, and he's trying to work as hard as he can. Valenciano shaking up, and that's another guy that Pace can ill afford to lose, and they're checking his knee also. And yeah, he was involved in the tackle. So Valenciano... Now that looks like a cramp the way they're knocking that around, not his knee. I hope it's not his knee the way yeah. they're twisting that sucker. He's got a cramp in the calf they're trying to work out. And if that's a knee injury and they're treating it like that, here comes the malpractice <laughs> attorney. <laughs> I don't think it's broken. Right. And there's a knee in there somewhere. Not too much to cheer about right now. You just sit back and relax with the score uh, 34 to nothing. Yeah, Can't that, get too excited, but the crowd is hanging in here. I'll tell you, you like to watch, uh, but it's, it's now turned into just a, a domination by, uh, by the Hawks. Second and goal from the one-yard line. O'Neill and Mazur in the backfield. 
and Mazur trying to bull his way in, and this time he gets across, and it's a touchdown for Monmouth. Mazur just bullying his way, waiting for the charge of his offensive line, and then Eric Mazur, the 6'1 freshman, 225 pounds, picks up six points. Well, Mazur at the end of the first half was lead blocker for O'Neill. Comes out now, Rep O'Neill extends the favor, does the lead blocking for Mazur, and they get in the end zone. Two very tough backs, both over 200. And back out to attempt the point after is Higgerson, the left footed kicker, getting some experience here and this one is kicked in right through the middle and it's up and good for Higgerson so he's two for two on point afters. Well you can't stress it enough. I mean Mama does just a fantastic job but uh you know you cannot have your defense playing the whole game and the offense for pace has got to come out and do something just to eat off some time on the clock. Help your defense out. Give them a rest. That's not a misprint folks. 41 to nothing early in the third quarter. <laughs> Get those stories ready, Jim Hood. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a big lineman from Manasquan by the name of Hood. Went on to a stellar career at the University of Maryland and returned to his home roots to work with PB34. <laughs> Mom is going to kick it off again. There's Barrack out there. Do the kicking. Last week, Mammoth defeated St. Francis 46 to 17. And this one, uh, this one is really getting ugly right now. I guess, you know, you talk about Coach Callahan. His problem is his offensive line and his offense are doing such a great job. The offensive line is dominating that he keep putting in that first team. They're going to score. They're scoring in about two minutes. Varick is the kicker. And it'll be Julia Smith attempting to return. Gets to the 20. Cuts back, that's what he's been looking for. Smith has some room. Gets across midfield, down to the 40, and finally wrestled down. And Julia Smith, we said it a number of times, returned one last week for 88 yards. If he gets that first block, he's yeah. tough. He got the block there. Yeah, tremendous speed. He can really fly. And Barrett, you know, he's a safety man. He makes the tackle. Third quarter, 9-10 remaining. Mammoth leading it 41 to nothing. And Pace takes over with good field position at the Mammoth 43-yard line. O'Connor still the quarterback. Sermonello the lone setback. And again, O'Connor looks for someone, nobody there. He's got no more than two seconds before he's snowed under. Yeah, Jason Gamitter, number 46, uh, led the team in tackles last week, right in his face. O'Connor just has no time to throw the ball. They've got to use a timing pattern or, or go to a shotgun. I don't know. A, I don't know what the answer is for pace. A deep shotgun, but I think. I'll tell you what. You've got to give Connor the, uh, the time to throw the ball. Well, Kevin O'Connor was 17 out of 29 last week for a couple of touchdowns against Stony Brook. But so far today, uh, he is not having that type of day at all. Only completed two in the first half. And it's second down and 14. Sermonello somehow got through the hole and scoots all the way up to the 35-yard line. Looked like he was stopped and uh, as a little fire plug. He just got a little bit lower, went underneath, I think. In submarine, somebody got underneath him with a good pickup. Yeah, uh, keep low, keep the head up, keep driving. Sermonello, he's, he's got some fresh legs. Didn't play a lot in the first half till the end. So uh, you know, he could do some things out there. Well, Frank Sermonello is the 5'9 freshman, 200-pounder, number 44 in the backfield. So the ball right on the 35, third and three. Sermonello again, the lone back in the backfield. This pass oh. caught and then crunched. Coming up to make the tackle was Michael James. Well, I'll tell you what. That's why you play cornerback, to just lay people out. You, you dream for plays oh, like that. Oh, God. Have to stretch out for the pass to make the reception, and the cornerback comes up, and boom, he drills him with big number eight. Here it is. <laughs> Take another look at this. I mean, this is a, just a great hit. Wow. 
Jason Lang said, <laughs> wow. I, I caught the football, but why did I catch that? Lang out of Hamden, Connecticut. Fourth and two. O'Connor drops back. Here comes the rush again. Pass is intercepted. He could be gone. And off to the races. Can he get away? No. But the pass intercepted by Anthony Berkey. And Mammoth forces yet another turnover. Turnover number six against Pace. Yeah, O'Connor was going number 28, Coleman. But Berkey, you know, Coleman comes out of the backfield. Berkey, the middle linebacker, just follows him, shadows, steps in front, makes that interception. Great play. So Pace had fourth and two. O'Connor with all kinds of pressure on him once again, unloaded it. And Berkey just sitting back, stepped in and made the interception. Yeah. Barglowski, the quarterback. And fighting his way forward was number 31 for the Monmouth University Hawks, O'Neill. And you can see uh, Monmouth, they're just running harder and harder. There's a flag on the field, but they're really, really working well right now. And this is going to be against Offside is against the uh, pace, but declines. That's right, Mama declines it. Forty-one to nothing. Mama's leading it. Barglowski, the backup quarterback, getting some time. Madrano trying to get outside. Flags go flying. Leading the blocking that time was number 88 for Mammoth Garbolino, and I think Garbolino called on the penalty. Yeah, it could be a holding. Get that arm wrapped around. That's right, trying to lead the way for Madrano. And just as Madrano made his cut upfield, saw the yellow flag go flying. Well, you know, Bob, it's so interesting. We got the stats at halftime. Mammoth, there's a holding call. Mammoth, Mammoth used 11 different receivers in that first half. Uh, I mean, just they have so many weapons they can go to. People who know how to play football. Great balance and great depth. And sometimes that's tough on a coach to try to decide who you really sure. need in there come crunch time. Of course, games like this, uh, Kevin Callahan has confidence in a lot of players. Gives him a chance to check things out. Holder is split wide. Barglowski barking signals. And there's the handoff to Madrano again. He tries to get outside and nothing there. A pickup of maybe a maybe a half a yard or so. Yeah, really working that left side of the field. Not good pursuit by pace. They're, they're trying to stick in there. Now, you know, talking about pace and their defense, I mean, this defense has been on the field all day, and, you know, they, these guys have got to be tired. Uh, Mama's got some pretty big boys up front, and they're just going to keep pounding on them. And Mammoth is certainly wearing them down. Barglowski drops back, throws out to the right, pass intended for number 84, Ron Polakowski. But Barglowski overthrew him incomplete. And that's a, receiver. that's a dangerous play for Barglowski to overthrow because the cornerback can come up and just snag that ball and go the other way. That ball's got to be out there quick. Can't float it. So it'll be fourth down and 10 yards to go for Mammoth. The ball on the pace 33-yard line. And Mammoth with a 41 to nothing lead will go for it. Barglowski drops back again. Throws it out, this time to the right side, intended for Holder, and it is overthrown, and then Holder, along with number nine, Ray Crumdike, get into it a little bit. That's a great name, Crumdike, for a football player. You can see he's intense. He's ready to go at a moment's notice. So 
So the pass goes incomplete. Everybody looking around, acting as if there was some kind of big problem out there, and staring each other down. Oh, now that's interesting. Pushing the ball against pace. I'll tell you. I see it on both sides of the coin on that one. This well, comes Dyke, number nine. A little bit of, uh, he just wanted to keep the play going after yeah. the whistle. I think that's the reason for the call. Holder was initially trying to get away. And then once you're challenged, you must step up. Sure. You know, it's a macho sure. game. You can't ever oh, back sure. down. It's like a <laughs> hockey fight, you know. This guy said something. You, you can't act like you have selective hearing and never hear. you got to react. So Pace having a, a difficult afternoon, to say the least, trailing it 41 to nothing. And I still say games like this, uh, Jim Hoots, particularly early in the season, are probably more harmful than anything for a coach. When you're ahead 41 to nothing, so many little things can get by. Sure. And all of a sudden, when you've got to really turn it on, uh, you're, not, you're not prepared to do so. Next week, Mammoth uh, will be visiting CW Post. So uh, Kevin Callahan, as you know, they break the films down. By the time you're done looking at it, oh, you yeah. think you played the worst game in the history of sure. football. Sure, got to keep everybody sharp. So Pace takes over, first and ten. Inside handoff to Terminello, and not too much there. Yeah, nothing really at home there. No holes, Terminello right up the gut. And Mammoth, a lot of people right in the middle of the field. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. Mammoth defense having a great afternoon. Uh, as Maskey has played big at right end. Of course, Gemitter over on the left side has just had a tremendous afternoon. And the entire defense of Mammoth has just shut down pace completely. And here's the give. And again, nothing there. This time it was Coleman on the carry. Yeah, trying to run that trap. Coleman, it really took a long time for that to develop. The pace looked lethargic on that. 59, since Mansky ran around the end and made the tackle inside. So it'll be third down and about 10 yards from the Pace 19 yard line. Pace trailing at 41 to nothing. O'Connor still in there, quarterback drops back, throws over the middle. The pass complete. And depending on the spot, whether or not it'll be a first down. Yeah, he's close. It was Mike Hart, the tight end, right across the middle. Finally, O'Connor got some protection. Had a little bit of time, and it is a first down, so they'll move the chains. Here it is. Yeah, he's got time to throw the ball and, and survey the field. You see Hart making the reception. Not a whole lot of time, but yeah. enough time to drop back and get set to locate his target across the middle. So first and 10 from the 30. Connor may be changing the play at the line. And a little confusion there. I think a motion penalty against Pace. You can see, uh, there it is right there. A horrible sight to many coaches. But you, sure. could, you could see uh, Connor trying to change the play up at the line of scrimmage and the uh, yep. communication a little bit off there. Yep. Too, too much time. Uh, you know, saw, saw an opening, but just didn't have enough time to change the play. So it'll be first and 15 from the 30 for Pace. As they give away five yards. Terminello, number 44 in the backfield. And the handoff went to Terminello, and once again, no gain. Terminello carries the ball. Yeah, that, that, that play just not going to work. They've got to try and get to the outside, but it's very difficult. You got Szymanski and, and Gamera, the ends coming so hard. Trying to contain everything, they're not going to let anything get outside. And it'll be second and 15 with three minutes to play in the third quarter. Lang is in motion. The handoff to Lang on the reverse. And nothing there. They tried to bring Lang from the split end position or the flanker slot around and read beautifully by the Monmouth defense and a little frustration for that young man, the quarterback, Kevin Connor. Yeah, they tried to go to the right side. I just mentioned that Gamera came out, made the tackle, got a lot of help, a lot of blue jerseys, they're gang tackling. 
Yeah, it's great for mom. It's on the other side of the coin pay. It's just nothing is working today. Third and 15 from the 25 yard line of Tate. Connor drops back, has to throw quickly, steps up in the pocket. The pass almost completed, but just dropped on the way down to the ground, so it goes incomplete. Kareem Hendricks make that Damian Coleman couldn't hold on. Yeah, Coleman, he, he's done some things well today for uh, for the setters, but couldn't hold on. Pace is going to have to punt it away. Here it is again. Coleman had it for a second, then dropped it. Tried yeah. to cover up as if he caught it all the way. Sure, low ball. It would have been a tough catch. So Pace will kick it away. Chris Chopper, the punter. And back deep for Mammoth, number four, Steve Cavello. And here's the punt, a high spiraling kick back to the 26. And Cavello fumbles it. It rolls out of bounds. And Mammoth will take over at the 25-yard line. Out of bounds on the 25-yard line. And the first team is going to come back on the field. They'll probably stay on to the third quarter. Probably try and get another score. Barglowski still in at quarterback as the return man Cabello comes off the field. And uh, Barglowski, the senior coach, Callahan, giving a lot of playing time whenever he can. Well, he's a capable backup. And Barglowski, the first quarterback here at Monmouth University. And indeed, it's a sure thing. Yeah, that's no understatement. Monmouth <laughs> University. As we hear whistles all over the place, Monmouth University has really done some job on this campus the last five years or so between the basketball team and the football team and the huge expansion and enrollment. This college is prospering right now. Yep. Doing a fantastic job, West Long Branch. Well, offside was a call against Dave Monroe, number 87. <laughs> it was funny on that one, Bob. Uh, the tackles and the guards we're all saying that it was a defensive fault that he had encroached and hit Monroe, but the rest were having none of that. Particularly when it's 41 to nothing, you know, anything <laughs> close is going to go in uh, Pace's favor. <laughs> so first and 15 from the 20-yard line, and a whistle, and I don't know what we had there. Looks like it's time, ran out of time. Maybe delay a game. Yep. So delay of game it was. Yeah, so Barglowski's got to see that. He's the quarterback. He's the senior. He knows that. He's got to see that clock and, and try and hurry up the snap count. So they march him back another five. That makes it first and 20 from the Mammoth 15-yard line. Well, if the defense for Pace can, uh, can get a stop here, they could have good field position. First down, 20 yards to go. Barglowski drops back, throws quickly, and the pass caught but wrestled down immediately. Was Anthony Hunt with the reception. Trying to spring Hunt on a short one and spring him loose up the sideline, but Pace covers up. Yeah, Teresa, number 20, the strong safety, right in his face. Makes a tackle. So no gain on the play. And that'll bring up a second down and 20 yards to go situation with the ball on the 16-yard line. Here's Barglowski again. Slips it out in the pass caught by number 84, Ron Polakowski. And Polakowski wrestled down and knocked out of bounds. So Barglowski completes it. Gets him out of a little bit of trouble back there. Yeah, nice catch by Polakowski on the run. Barglowski out of Lacey Township, Lacey High School. Started the first game at quarterback in the history of Monmouth University. It was a quick four years ago. Third and 12 from the 23 yard line of Monmouth. Barglowski again drops back. Here comes the pressure and Barglowski is sacked at the 15. Balasciano in on the tackle. Reed Sands it was who got there. Reed Sands number two. Sands was coming all the way. Yeah. 
and that's what Pace needs to do. They need to create some, some opportunities for themselves, and they've done that. They're going to force Monmouth to get a punt. They should have decent field position. They might be able to get in there for a score. And there's Sands number two. It's a safety blitz all the way. And Monmouth didn't pick it up, so it'll be a punting situation for Monmouth. Kicking from the five, almost blocked. Barglowski just got it off. And out to the 49-yard line. The catch made and immediately tackled by number 88. Justin Garbolino and Garbolino had a flag thrown on him after it for a little bit of taunting after the play. Well, a heck of a lot of hustle, a heck of a job by Garbolino. Well, Let's watch him here. Yeah. Watch him, makes the tackle. That's a just a, a terrific tackle and great hustle to get down the field. That's going to go in its pace. Mendikitis did well to hold on to that one. But now they mark it off. And it's going to be a holding call. I thought they had Garbolino for a little celebration yeah. after it. Looked like he came up and said something. I thought maybe it had been a taunting. That'll teach me to try to referee from up here. <laughs> Never fails. Try to show off the stuff you know, you know, and it yeah. jumps back to uh, slap you in the face. So first and ten for Pace. They're trailing it 41 to nothing. And once again, the Mama defense just smothering it. Terminello with the carry once again. Yeah, trying to go up the middle, and it's just not going to have anything to do with it's it right there. there. Yeah. A lot of blue jerseys all over the football. And that's going to take care of the third quarter. So they will flip things around here at Kessler Field at West Long Branch here at Mammoth University with Mammoth leading it 41 to nothing. It's been a complete domination performance by the Mammoth Hawks. And they lead it 41 to nothing. It's a beautiful fall afternoon. Not so beautiful if you're a pace setter fan. If you're a Hawk fan, you sit out here all day. 41 to nothing at the end of three complete from Mammoth University. Underway here at Monmouth University, 41 to nothing. Monmouth on top of the pace setters. Bob Lampinen and Jim Hoos with you on TV 34. And Jimmy said before we went to the break, just total domination by Monmouth. And pace is battling, but they just don't have the horses yeah, this afternoon. They don't have it today, and it's all been the Hawks. Inside handoff and a pickup of about five on the carry. Jason Lang. And they've gone with that play a couple of times, and each time Lang has picked up four or five yards. Yep, they've had success with the trap inside. But, uh, you know, fourth down, fourth and five. Looks like they're going to go for it. That's going to put a strain on that defense if they don't get it here. That's right, fourth and five from the pace 45-yard line. And you've got to know that Mom is coming on this one. And Kevin Connor, the quarterback, is saying, oh, no, block yeah. for me, guys. Make <laughs> oh, yeah. sure you block. Give me Con three, three seconds. Connor has had a tough afternoon dealing with the rush. It's a draw play and nothing there. That time, Mama didn't come with the big rush. And flags went flying. And again, they handed off to Lang. But interesting, Jimmy, that time, Mama kind of stayed back. Yeah, they, uh, they were passive. They read the play. Total with number uh, 53, Sedanowicz. He makes the tackle on the backfield. He got a motion call, which was declined. That's going to be a first down for, uh, for the Hawks. So it was fourth and five, and Pace guilty of the motion violation. Mammoth declined it, so they take over. And they'll have it first and ten on the 49-yard line of Pace. Well, you're still going to see some of the starters. It's going to be a mixture from here on out. Some of the starters are going to stay in there, get some work. Well, you look at some of the statistics. Medrano, seven carries for 111 yards. So the little guy for Mammoth has certainly done all right here. Medrano, the lone setback in the offense for Mammoth on this play. Barglowski hands off to Medrano. And, well, that'll be some minus yards. So just as we sing the praises of Mike Medrano, good uh, on-rushing defense by Pace brings him down for a loss 
of about three. Yeah, number 41, Chris Shotwell, out of his defensive end position. Finally got fed up, shot the gap, and made a nice play on Madrano for the loss. Sabella, the quarterback for Mammoth, is 15 out of 23 for 208 yards and two TDs, and one of the reasons why Mammoth's on top by 41. Second down, 13 from the 47-yard line of Pace. Barglowski, the quarterback. And he hands it off. And Mazur bowls his way, maybe got to the 45-yard line. And there goes another flag. Yeah, now, now what you're going to see is a lot of tired pace defenders. It's going to be sloppy play. you got to keep it crisp. And a frustration situation. It's going to be a personal foul against Pace, and that's what the referees will yep. continue to look for now. When you're down by a big score, the tendency is to say some things or maybe get a cheap shot in, and the referees try to control it. And one way that you can control it in this sport, throw that thing sure. 15 yards, and that stops a lot of nonsense out there. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you know, and the, that, that defense from Pace is tired. Uh, they're just trying to salvage some pride. They're hitting left to the belt or after the call, and you know, that's what's going to get the flag thrown. So it's 15 big ones against Pace on a personal foul. First down for Monmouth. They march it all the way. Let's see where they're going to put it to the 31 yard line. And Monmouth has it first and 10. Uh, and you know, warming up uh, Jimmy on the sideline yeah. for Monmouth was the third string quarterback, John De Pasquale out of Kearney. So maybe Barglowski will get some time and then De Pasquale will go in there for a few snaps. Here's Francis, cuts inside and picks up a couple. Kevin Francis on the carry. Yeah, Francis is a quick runner. In and out, darts around, cut back and got some nice yardage. Francis, 5'9". 180-pound senior. Come on, Let's go. Second down and five yards to go. Ball on the 27. Holder is split wide to the left. And there's the handoff. Madrano following his blocker, actually directing his blocker in front and gets to the 20. Yeah, that's birdie, 56. He's got to get out there and hit somebody. Madrano, that's what he's trying to do, push him into the blocker, get going because they were running a, a stunt inside. It was Perone and Cervona, number 22. The middle linebackers were coming, and they had the outside. See, there's a stunt. They're coming hard, trying to plug up the middle. And Bernie's got to get out there. He's got to come out hard. He actually Hook that shoved guy. him into yeah. the guy. Said, go hit that guy in front of me. You know the case. Go hit him before he hits me. <laughs> <laughs> but that was good enough for a first down. So first and 10 from the 20. Mama's leading it 41 to nothing. Barglowski hands it off to Mazer up the middle, and Mazer bolts forward for a couple. Well, Mazer's only a freshman. He's got to learn to, to get his body going forward. He stands up when he hits that line of scrimmage. He's a big kid. He's got good size, 6'1", 225, but he's got to get higher knees, and he's got to get his head down. He's got to put the punishment on the defender. And, Jimmy, through the third quarter, Mammoth with... 378 total net yards opposed to only 82 for Pace. And the spectators here have been able to just sit back and relax for a long time. They're not biting any fingernails now. <laughs> Second and eight from the 18. Monmouth leading it by a scanty 41-point margin. And the catch made by Finer and does the rest by himself. Gets it all the way down to about the 11. We'll give a lot of credit to Barglowski on that one. Number 70, the defensive tackle, Myers. Scott Myers was right in Barglowski's face. Barglowski had the poise and the presence of mind to get it out there to find and then take the hit. A lot of credit. 10.25 to play in the fourth quarter. And it'll be third down and about one from the 12. And a timeout on the field called by Pace. Well, you've got to give uh, Greg Lasardis and the pace setters a lot of credit. They're hanging in there, but down 41 to nothing. I wouldn't want to be calling timeouts. I'd want to uh, just keep things moving along, get back on the bus, and worry about next week. Oh, Bobby, I agree with you. You see, the, uh, it's a great day out here. Breeze. Uh, it's nice out. You know, I mean, it's a great day of football. And if you're a Hawk fan, I mean, these fans 
you know, it kind of lulls you to sleep. You're, you're killing the other team. But the Monmouth Hawks have just done an outstanding job. Their offensive line got off the ball right away in the first quarter. Their backs were running hard. Um, you talk about Sabella. What a game he's had. Over 200 yards passing. The defense, I mean, they picked up where they left off last week versus St. Francis. They're coming after the ball. They're getting after it. Making good tackles, hitting. Special teams have played well. So just a great game for the Hawks today. Well, you mentioned Sabella, the starting quarterback for Monmouth. 15 out of 23 for 208 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions. And that's what you want from your quarterback. Not too much to cheer about if you're a Pace University fan. And it's pretty tough to live by your mascot when you're a setter and you're called a pace setter <laughs> down 41 to nothing. Uh, the, the pace has been set the wrong way if you're a Pace University fan. Some days you have days like that. Here's Barglowski, hands it off to Francis inside, and Francis up close to the 10-yard line. Not enough for the first down. About 58, Morano lost his helmet, lost his cap in the fray <laughs> In the fray What does a fray lay? <laughs> Jim Ooze has coined another term. A hey, fray lay, I'll take it. <laughs> F-R-A-L-E-Y. The, -E the melee and the play. fray. Get in there. And an injured player from that fray lay. Let's hope that it's not serious. Five minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. And this is uh, one thing that coaches are always concerned with in any game, particularly late in the game when the game is well in hand to have people yeah. going down with injuries. Don't want the starters to go down. That's why you put the second teamers in, give them the work. The, the game gets real sloppy at this point. People piling on. Uh, they're not running as hard as they can, and that's where the injuries occur. Jimmy Murdoch out. And Jim Murdoch has done a terrific job here in his years at Monmouth University with the medical staff. Forty-one to nothing, the lead. And you mentioned it is a good time for a lot of players to get some time. And the injured player is Eric Mazur. And I'll tell you, that's some loyal fans hanging in there. 225-pound freshman, a good future for this young man, Eric Mazur. He looks like a football player, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not lifting sure off there out. for yeah. all these people. No help. No help. Eric Mazur. 6'1", 225-pound freshman out of Toms River, New Jersey. Played for Bob Nanny down at Toms River North. Nanny's really re rebuilt that program. Fourth and one. Here's Barglowski, Mammoth, leading it 41 to nothing. And all kinds of stunting going on there. The trickery didn't work that time for Pace. Well, I'll tell you, if you're gonna go off sides, you might as well hit them. And you, you saw Morano, 58, get knocked backwards. Well, let's see if there anyone was drawn off. Of course, that's always the plea by the uh, team that people think was offside first. Here's what happened. Watch them jumping up and down here. Here comes everybody. Whoop, get back. <laughs> and you're right. Take a free shot. Ah, what the heck. <laughs> hey, if you're coming off, you are going to have a penalty. Carmen Morano, he's a smart guy, too. He may have just gone down to act like he that's was hit there to try to draw it. Somebody touches the move. Well, they're not sure because all those referees down there, those guys in the zebra shirts are talking it over. Well, what do you got? Well, I got this. What do you have? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, on the replay, it looked like that whole defensive front was coming. I didn't see anybody move, but, it, you know. Well, Kevin Callahan on the sideline. And they're finally, after all that discussion, going to call offsides against Pace. They're saying, well, look. Hey, did you see somebody move? <laughs> it's 41 to nothing. Eight guys were offside, but one of the Monmouth guys fell backwards. Is there any way we can help Pace here? And the answer is no. And they say, okay, offside Pace. Keep it honest, you know. So first down off the penalty. So it's first and goal from the six yard line, 41 nothing. Mom is looking for more here. Barglowski is the quarterback. He hands it off to Medrano. Now make that Francis. And Francis tried to scoot outside. Couldn't get there and then a little bit of uh, frustration on the hands of a few of the other players, including number 88 of Mammoth, 
Justin Garbolino. Yeah, these guys are getting after it. You know, you talk about pride. Anybody who plays football has got pride. And when you're getting beat up like this, you know, you don't take it. You don't take it that well. And uh, you got to give a lot of credit to number two, Reed Sands. He's just all over the field. And he made the, uh, the stop on Francis that time, shot the gap. So it's second and goal from the 10-yard line. Francis in motion. Barglowski rolls right. And the pass complete to Francis and knocked out of bounds. Not a stayed inbounds at the four-yard line. Good throw by Barglowski there. Well, there's a flag. They could be calling a pick on Mammoth right now. What happens, Francis goes behind one of his receivers. That's fine at 25. There's the pick. And that's what you probably see in the flag for. Francis comes out of the backfield behind Finer, and Finer picks off his de defender, and it's a completion. Yep, that's what's going to happen. So good pick up, Jim Hoos, on that pick, and isn't it interesting in the rules of football, you're allowed to go out there and almost take a guy's head off, but just a little screen, a little pick, oh no, you can't do that. Someone might get hurt. <laughs> you got you to let the linebackers be able to flow outside, I guess. <laughs> Well, people like to see the big hits, and you don't see them if you're, if you're picking guys off. That's again. true. <laughs> so what was a first and goal from the nine is now a second down and goal from the 25. And now Barglowski back to throw. And the pass is caught. And upended is number 25, Ricky Finer. And Finer really drew a crowd on that one. You had uh, Perone, the middle linebacker, Hartman, uh, the corner, Teresa, 20, the strong safety. Sands tried to get on that one. Well, good job by the pace defense. Yep. Barglowski dropped back, looked to the end zone, and Finer came in underneath. Yeah, take another look. Finer's going to go up in the air on this one. Almost takes an airplane ride. <laughs> Reed Sands right in there again. <laughs> that young man, number two, loves to hit people. Third and goal from the 17. Barglowski drops back. Ooh. Oh, and he is just wallop. Loose ball, fumble. And recovered by Pace. A ferocious hit by number seven, Brian Perone. Nobody blocks Perone. He comes on the blitz, the stunt. Wow. He really laid into Barglowski. Barglowski never saw it coming. You can feel for the quarterback right here. Barglowski dropping back. Oh, yeah, this is great. Watch this. <laughs> Perone's eyes lit up, said, I got a clear shot at him. I've been trying to get him all day. That'll clear the cobwebs. <laughs> so Pace takes over first and 10 from the Pace 25-yard line, trailing at 41-0, 7.20 to play fourth quarter. And up the middle they go all the way across midfield and that'll be a first down big run right there by number 32 brian griffel great interior blocking that time on that trap they get the uh, the motion in the backfield and griffel off to the races right up the middle now you're looking at the second team d second third team d for uh for mom and so so pace's first team should be able to do some things out there now First and 10 from the Mammoth 42. This is Sermonelli, and he picks up about four. Sermonelli off tackle down to the 36-yard line. Well, we're all going to get a chance, and, and so the coach to see how well the second team D for Mammoth can play. You know, this is where they uh, they perform. They they show the coach, hey, I'm worthy. You know, Jim. Uh, Last week we talked about the unusual schedule for Monmouth and that they had their first three games at home and any coach likes to play at home. But now you look at the schedule, they go on the road for their next three. So after this play, we can comment on that. Sermon Elliott, the inside handoff, and he's taken down at the 30, make that the 34 yard line. But three in a row on a road is tough. Yeah, extremely tough. You know, uh, you, you love being at home and you like to mix it up home away, home away, but three on the road, you're talking about T.W. Post, Mercyhurst, and Wagner, which is the toughest, probably the toughest game on their schedule. And they, they play Wagner on October 12th and then come back on the 19th of October against a very tough Towson State team. So a uh, big part of the schedule coming up three weeks in a row. Mammoth will be on the road. Third and two from the 33. 
Connor drops back, fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, gets across the 30, down to the 20, and knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line on the quarterback keeper. Connor rolled right one of the few times he was able to turn the corner today. Well, now you get a little, little something going on in that field. Yeah, it's a blood. Yeah, mom has got the game well in hand, but that defense wants to record a shutout. And now you got the first team all going to get the second team D. There's, there's a Connor coming around, around the right side. She really took that ball away and just start running. He just looked like he wanted to throw. Yeah. Wanted to throw. I mean, tuck it away and go. 5.28 to play in the football game. First and 10 from the Mamet 16 yard line. Lang is in motion. Here's Connor. Started to roll out, nowhere to go. Cuts it back inside and gets down to the 15. Yep, just gain yardage. Get up field. Well, Connor has learned that if the receiver is not open immediately, there's no time to stay back there and allow them time to try to break open or come back to the football. True. If it's not there immediately, he's got to yeah. run the ball. I'll tell you, Bob, I'd run a timing pattern. Second down, uh, you know, you're on about the, the 14, 15 yard line. Run into the corner, see what you get. Maybe get a, you know, pass interference. It's got to be quick. It may have to be on fast forward timing because not much time for Connor. Lang cuts it back to the inside, gets across the five, and still bowing forward. Well, I'll tell you what, they've had tremendous success on that play. The inside handoff, and they trap the tackle. These tackles for Mammoth have got to uh, understand what's going on. When they see that, when they see that guard go down, and you know somebody's coming to trap you, you got to follow that guard's hip and lay low, create a pile around the line of scrimmage. Jason Lang on the carry, a 5'10", 181-pound sophomore. And a personal foul, there's the frustration. I'll tell you, they were driving. They certainly did not need that yeah. at this point of the football game. That's a killer for this drive, 15 yards. If nothing else but pride, you want to get on the scoreboard. But they're going to march it all the way back. Frank Moreska, number 79, in there. Well, you know, we mentioned at the beginning in the open that uh, that Mammoth has shut this team out the last two years. You know, Pace has not scored a point on the Mammoth defense. That's right. So that pushes it all the way back to the 25. And it's second down and 19 yards to go for a first down. Kevin Connor, the junior quarterback, dropping back, got to throw quickly, unloads it, and the screen is set up, and inside the 20 was Ryan Griffel, and one of the few times that Pace has been able to uh, pull off the screen pass also, they had it set up nicely, and Griffel with a pretty good pickup there. Well, it's fourth down, you know, but I'll tell you, I don't know why you don't go for the end zone on that third down, at least try and get it down there, a long pass. Yeah, you might get the pass interference, but now you're looking at fourth down, they're obviously not going to try for the field goal. I mean, this is this is a tough call on fourth down. Fourth and ten from the 18. Connor drops back, steps up, no one to throw to, rolls right, flips to the end zone, and the pass was dropped. Dropped by number 28 of oh. Pace. Damian Coleman had it and just took his eye off of it. That was six points for Pace, and unfortunately, they stay off the board. Coleman couldn't squeeze it. Well, I mean, the offensive line tried to give O'Connor as much time as he could, but watch Coleman. Coleman to the 360. It's to his outside. He was trying to go in toward the inside of the field. What a, you know, it's a tough catch, but it did hit him right in the fingers. God. So Mama takes over. First and 10 from their own 12-yard line with 3.24 to play. New quarterback in there. It's John DePasquale, the third-string QB out there. Madrano takes the handoff and pushes his way up across the 15 to about the 17-yard line. Well, just going into about three minutes to go in the game, what Monmouth wants to do, just run the football, maybe pick up a first down, and then that's, that's it for the game. So Madrano has had a good afternoon, and new quarterback number five is John DePasquale, 6 395-pounder freshman out of Kearney, New Jersey. There he is. Walks his team up to the line of scrimmage. Second and eight. 
And the handoff is taken off. He's gone. That's going to be a touchdown for Jimmy Barrick. Barrick cruises into the end zone. Touchdown for the senior fullback. Back of a run for Jimmy Barrick. Dee Pasquale will say, hey, coach, two plays. What a drive I ran. That's the third street quarterback. Uh, uh, the line made a nice haul of run. Barrick cut back to his right. And Pace just took that defense is exhausted. He just outran everybody. Pace did not pursue on the play. So that'll add to the statistics for Varick. As he broke that one from about the 25. And that makes it 47 to nothing. And Higerson will attempt the point after. Barglowski the holder. It is down, the kick is up, and it is good. So Higgerson, three for three on extra points. And another flag. But a flag is down. Let's see if it's after the kick. I think the point probably will stand to make it 48 to Zippo. Take another look. Now, Barrick's going to cut back to the right. There's a huge hole on the right side. Oh, what happens is Pace over pursues to the right. And nobody's back. The defensive end, nobody came over the corner. And just a heck of a run. So, Barrick, actually, that was from the 23 yard line, 22 yard line. And that's about a 78 yard run or so from scrimmage. 48 0. So, the point after stands. And you can see across the way, that is construction, new soccer fields and softball fields, tennis courts being built here at Monmouth University. Uh, athletic Director Dr. McNeil and her staff have really worked hard at refurbishing and improving athletic facilities. They converted the gym last year and made that uh, gym into a nice home court advantage for the Hawks. Now they're taking care of the outside facilities. Of course, Kessler Stadium, uh, Kessler Field, just a great place for Kevin Callahan's squad to play their home games. They love being home. Yeah, and it shows, you know, they had a tough opener uh, versus Southern Connecticut. Uh, didn't score any points, got shut out, but then they come right back versus St. Francis, do a good job, and they're coming back here against Pace, a team they should beat, and they really put on an offensive show today. And Mom, it's 11 and 5 uh, in the history of this football program at home, and four of those games that they lost were by a touchdown or less. So Thomas yeah. is tough at home for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the final. And in pretty good shape right now. It has 48 to nothing. Thomas will kick it off. Back to Smith and Hartman for Pace. And picked up by Hartman, a one-hopper, gets it about the 30, across the 40, and down he goes at the 41-yard line. Hartman carries the ball. Pace will take over, first and 10, from the 41. Two minutes, 21 seconds remaining. Well, you don't want to give up the long pass. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Pace does, whether they take a nail or just run into the uh, middle of the field. Or not the clock. Altieri is back in at quarterback. He played a couple of series in the first half, then he came back with Connor. And there's the handoff. Sermonello picks up about five, maybe six yards as he gets across the 45. And you got to like Sermonello. He's a hard runner. Put his head down. a hard runner. And main offensive weapon, Billy Smith, they... 233-pound fullback for Pace went out with an injury earlier, and Sermonello has been in at fullback ever since. Craig Altieri, the quarterback. So Altieri, who is 0 for 1 on the season, is now 1 for 2. That was a reception, and I think then a fumble, and picked up oh, yeah. and recovered by Mammoth. So the pass was complete to number 89, Robert Communale, and he dropped it, and Mammoth picked up the fumble, the recovery by number 97, Emmanuel Stinson. Yeah, and Emmanuel Stinson has had one heck of a game. He replaced Joe Little, who was the original starter, number 52. Little's out with an ankle injury. Stinson steps in, has a great game. 
Well, here it is again, Altieri, his second attempt of the year. It's complete. There's the catch, a couple of steps, and then the fumble. Yeah, you got to cover that ball. Brian McAleenan was defending on the play for Monmouth, and McAleenan did well to kind of keep the receiver away from the fumble. Madrano tiptoeing his way through, trying to hide behind some big linemen in front, picks up a couple. 127 to play. New quarterback, as we mentioned, is the third string John De Pasquale out of Kearney, New Jersey. Well, you've got to say the uh, shutout is, is well in hand for Monmouth. Unless <laughs> they run a Pasarchik or something. That's right. <laughs> De Pasquale, the quarterback. Ducks under the center. Second and seven. Hands it off to Madrano, who scoots outside. And Madrano, Tim, it always seems, finds a way to pick up something, even when nothing's there. He falls forward and picks up two. And that's what you love as a coach, a back that knows how to run, knows how to get up the field, pick a hole. You know, he could be stopped for a loss. All of a sudden, he gains two yards. Thirty-five seconds to play, 48 nothing. The clock running, third and five. So Mammoth will... Improved to 2-1 and one on the year. Pace falls to 0-3. And, and Monmouth will look to pack their bags at the end of this one. And scooting to the outside, number 26, Walt Christopic. And I think that's going to do it. And they'll let it run down with Monmouth on top, 48 to nothing. So the Monmouth Hawks win this one easily. An offensive show for sure. 48 nothing over pace on Parents Day here in West Long Branch. Kevin Callahan's squad with a complete domination. And what can Coach uh, Greg Lazarda say? Kevin and Greg just shake hands. Nice game. They packed their bags. Mama's on the road for the next three weeks. 28th of September at CW Post. October 5th at Mercyhurst. And October 12th at Wagner. So a tough stretch coming up for the Hawks. Yep, at Wagner on the island. That's going to be the game of the season for the Hawks. They've got to sit there, you know, you can't overlook CW Post or Mercyhurst, but Wagner, that's the game. Okay, got to get by the Seahawks. Well, a lot to go on before that. You're absolutely right. This is the first year, remember, folks, of the Northeast Conference. Last week, Monmouth defeating St. Francis of Pennsylvania in the first ever NEC game. Championship being awarded in the conference this year, so conference games become uh, that much more important to the Monmouth Hawks. Big crowd. They enjoyed this one, and probably not as competitive as they would have liked, but the folks have turned out here for Parents Day. And, uh, a great house. I know they appreciate the play of Mama this afternoon. Oh, yeah. When you're a parent, uh, which I'm not, but I, I know my folks love to see the win, even though we blew them out or something like that. And, uh, like you mentioned before, the nail-biting, you know, that's great, but to take the 48 to nothing wins. Good all-around performance by Mama. Sabella with a couple of touchdown passes. O'Neill with a couple of short runs. Um, virtually everybody got in the act. And Madrano broke a couple. Uh, we saw Varick break one from about 75 yards at the end of the game. So a lot of things to uh, look at at the films. A lot of things to be happy about. And of course, Pace will go back and they'll have to regroup and uh, look for victory number one next week. Yeah, it's tough being 0-3. You know, you're on the road today getting blown out. But hey, you go back home. You, you go back to work on Monday. Go to practice. Got to go to work on Monday? Uh, it's work. <laughs> Basketball's fun. Football's work. Practice. <laughs> well, Monmouth University wins this one 48 to nothing over Pace. Hope you enjoyed it from Kessler Field. The Hawks will be on the road for the next three weeks. For Jimmy Hoos, I'm Bob Lampin, and thanks a lot, folks. Have a great day.